Can, can I say I this know. too? This movie continues the trope of shitty DC fathers. What father tells his son, you're the only family he has left, stop coming to see me and drop out of college? Yeah, that scene was heartbreaking <laughs> okay, for me. So I don't know. That's not cool. I don't, can I, okay, can I finish what I was saying? Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Like, sorry. What I'm trying to say is this movie made it worse. And it made it worse because we got that pointless scene where he why are we getting flash iris west origin story stuff where she doesn't even talk like why yeah in the movie? Yeah. You know? yeah and then okay you know what that car crash scene that is fucking cringy and really weird and perverted her the car way, was not going fast enough to crunch her the, she the does talk he, during when she starts to crap a little bit okay you know herself. what just stop Look, <laughs> he says one word to the car my bad what I'm trying to say is, why is he brushing this woman's hair? He has no idea who she is and everything. That is fucking creepy. Yeah. Yeah. I that is, see. there's no redeeming that. What the, like Daniel saying, with the hot dog flying to, towards her face, there's this weird, creepy sexual tone going on with his like look at her and everything. And like, he's like brushing Maybe. her hair and like touching her face practically. And there's a hot dog flying towards her. What the fuck is going on? Seriously. Like I, yeah, that could have been done I better. Think, and then not you're at gonna, all. It's that, you don't even know that that's Iris West. We only know that that's Iris because we've seen like casting the interview. Like, oh, this, yeah, the, we, the I mean, interview. we're yeah. Because yeah. if yeah. you're not, if you're not interview. like a big, like if you're not a big fan, we know because like, we read the comics. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. I know because I watched the Flash show, yeah. <laughs> or that too. Yeah, you watched the Flash yeah. show. Like, and so that scene was pointless, and it was just weird. The only point to it is literally for him to like be like, "I'm job searching," but then they literally already they then reiterate that when he goes to see his dad, and his dad's like, "You're yeah, they four jobs." They do they do the show and tell they tell you that he is job Mm -hmm. searching, and they show you that he's job searching. Yeah, so So to cut it down a bit, you could definitely. I will. I won't lie though. I did laugh at the the dogs hot dog part. That, that was, was super funny. Was like, oh, hilarious. that's why okay. he got a hot dog. But yeah, but I, why? No, 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 no. I'm not done. Um, they, <laughs> it wasn't either, to, but okay. I, I, this happens. We, you know, this happens. Then for, hurry up and finish. All right. Uh, uh, the dad talking to him. It's much better in this one than it is in Whedon's because yeah, you oh, definitely right. get it like more of an explanation there. So you definitely don't need that scene. Like you could have cut that whole area out. You don't need that comedy. You don't need the creepiness. And you still get it there. I do agree that it's like showing, not telling and whatnot. But like, yeah, you just needed that. As long as you have that relationship established with his dad, that made more sense at the very least. Yeah, like, and you, you can still show that, like you said, take that scene out. But the weird caressing of the face with the hot dog flying towards her face, like what the hell was going on? Well, and it's just like all this slow motion of like showing him staring her down. And the thing is, that scene could have been funny. You know, with him taking well, the hot dog and giving it to the dogs and everything. What were you going to say, you know, Brandon? Honestly, like, uh, two things with that, with what Danny was saying. Yeah, that could have been funny, and that could have also introduced, like, Iris West. You know what I mean? Just, like, give us an intro. Why isn't she driving to, like, chase a story or something? She's a reporter as well. Um, at least in some of the comic series, she is a reporter. Um, but with the whole dad thing, dude, why is... Well, I can understand his dad being like, I want you to stop this. I want you to have your own life. I don't want you to be doing what it, it's like the whole thing where parents control what their kids do and some parents just let parent you know kids do like what they actually want to do and his dad is like i feel like i'm controlling you indirectly and i don't yeah. want to be doing that and i understand that part and i that can sense. get that but then at the end of the movie when he does get accepted to everything he's just like oh my god like and it's just like you just told him to give up all of his dreams and to stop and now you're really proud of him for continuing to disobey you and go against you so i just felt like there was a big contrast on that like there's purpose and meaning to one side and i can see how both reactions are acceptable but they just don't align we're just kind of just agreeing to agree at this point you know that i don't like that my only thing there is that in one, you know, he's basically not really saying quit school or anything. He's just saying, don't live your life by just trying to do this for me. Like, do what you need to for you, not for me. Mm-hmm. Whereas, and it's because it's at that point, there's no progress. He doesn't, it's like that whole thing where a parent trusts their kid, but also there's that feeling of like, you know, even if so, there hasn't been any progress made doing whatever they want. So like, you know, you want to dictate that for them because you don't believe that they're capable. And when Barry does that, it's showing him that he is capable for the first time. And he's more so like proud that he's achieved something and he proved him wrong. And that's why 
that happens there and that's why it fits and that's why i think it fits well yeah the the scenes between his dad makes sense why is it i mean even that that like it's like dude you knew barry's gonna do this like clearly he has like the the drive the directive he has four dude when i had four jobs to buy a base like everyone was just like that's crazy but i know you're gonna end up getting that base and i got my goddamn six string it's like you know it's gonna happen he trusts his son that his son can do anything so he knows his son can do it why are you going to tell him no and then accept it later? That just doesn't align. And like, it was so mean spirited the way he yeah. did it too. Yeah. yeah. And the other yeah. thing too about the Flash, and you know, I know I've been number one hater and all that. Uh, it's just I don't think they know how to write this character in this movie. I don't think he's a good or they're a good choice for the film. Uh, you know, like he was the one cast, or one of like the two. I, f- I feel like there's somebody else, uh, that was casted that you're just like, what? Yeah, and like, you know, Flash again, Flash is someone who does crack jokes and he's very mm-hmm. sarcastic, but he's a sure of himself. He is the Flash is his own person, he's not someone who necessarily is gonna go like googly eyes for other superheroes. Like, we've said this before, Brandon. The Flash and Batman, and it's literally been said in the comics, they have a respect for each other as yes. de- as detectives and kind like of a Barry love wants- ha- and kind of a love hate relationship too. It's a very res- uh, but it's very yes. respectable. They yeah. Barry is trying to prove himself and be like, no, yeah, I'm on the same like page with you, bats. Like, and what yeah. about this and this overlooked thing? And it's like, okay, cool. That's that's the Flash, not like the a dorky like un- yeah what, what you said unconfident person where it's like why would bruce trust this kid yeah it's you just like, like you know like own up to that that is a good ass dynamic that i thought yeah. was genius when they did it in the comics mm-hmm. flash is like or batman talks about flash like he respects his effort to clear his dad's name he respects how thorough he is and how detailed he could be and obviously how fast he is at working at cases and you know flash respects batman for his detective skills on like getting evidence and all that stuff it's like why do we have this dynamic in the movie why does it like and why do we get a flash origin like half origin story in a justice league film i'm like you know can i pick up oh go ahead sorry uh it's just like why any of this and you know let me talk about something else like if we're holding like actors accountable for things why is no one talking about how ezra miller apparently choked someone out and then threw him on the ground oh yeah right? that yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. that's what i forgot I, about that yeah like are we just gonna like you know if we're gonna hold actors accountable outside their jobs because that's what I, people have been doing i didn't I that, honestly that's, that's a whole that's a whole nother yeah, yeah, that's know, a whole nother can of worms but huh. I, I just want to say this too if you're gonna do a movie a ensemble movie where you're going to introduce people you got to go to the guardians of the galaxy or the x-men route don't give everybody an origin you know just the flash didn't need an origin in a justice league movie he just shows up you're like oh there's a flash okay that's it that's all you need and then (laughs) give him a movie after it would have been i guess in this case uh, if you wanted to kind of waylay all that it would have been cool to have him be like uh, you know, they still have that scene of that camera footage of him and Bruce is going off of that, and he yes. finds out who he is. That's and you good. just see him being like a he is a nobody at a precinct, and they just kind of treat him like shit. And you see him leaving, mm-hmm. and you have Bruce there, like, "Hey, can I talk to you, sir?" And he's like, "Oh, what, what's going on?" Or they're like, "Hey, Alan, guy here to see you." Blah blah. And then that's how he gets him and recruits him, and that's it. That mm. could have been a really cool intro because yeah, it's that whole thing of the Flash is the flash you don't need to it's not like a marvel character you like you know the flash you, you mm-hmm. know who he is yeah. and he has that big nuance about him like it, it would have worked they really tried to do what to tony keep... did with spider-man and yeah the, so yeah it yeah. doesn't work well like dude just have barry invest you know working on a homicide case and he's looking at evidence and then all of a sudden like batman comes up from behind and just is like what did you look at this and just all of a sudden like barry's like what the and then he talks to Batman and has that you see that connection between him and Batman because yeah, Barry's freaked out, but him like being able to talk about the case and the evidence like in front of Batman and Batman's like, I need you. You know what I mean? Like he proved himself, he can prove himself that way, and that would have been a brilliant way. And then you have the flash and you're set and you're all set up with that. But yeah, uh. too much of an origin story because the only origin story that really mattered that connected this film was cyborgs. That's the one I, I can agree oh, on that we're we going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Yeah. 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 But, Jeez. um, and the other thing with the flash, like apparently he knows how to heal himself, but then he can't. 
and yeah like yeah. it was like come on Barry. that was like a new skill and, for him that he you was know trying what? to do and it looked I, like it just takes time like he it takes time for him to heal that's sure like but maybe like, he can accelerate his body no, healing which is really cool yeah so no, there's right. two there's two scenes that make no sense to me they got rid of one trip you know whatever of him falling uh but the scene where he gets shot in the under the harbor he should be able to dodge that no excuse like flash moves literally at like the speed of light that dude can dodge anything moving slower than him same thing when he was running around in that base generating electricity there's no reason for him to have gotten hit i mean he was they they were shooting at him that entire time that's the thing too like they were shooting him for good like 10 to 15 minutes and he dodged every single one except for that flash evacuated an entire entire building an entire building of civilians in like a millisecond literally like yeah that fast like the way silver did we're very unsure of like his timeline with his powers so Mm -hmm. check this out he's not a forensic scientist yet but he has the flash powers he got his powers as a forensic scientist yeah that's really late in the the lab yeah and like he got electrocuted so that just doesn't add up so we don't know how long he's been the flash for because we don't know how long he's not even a forensic scientist so now our timeline of understanding is totally off so it's hard to judge his skill level and that's where i think is a big mistake as well you know like again Everyone's skill levels and experience levels are just way too all over the place. Dynamic, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We don't get any really cool, unique things that the uh, scenes that set him apart. Like, you know, like as shitty as that, that X-Men Apocalypse movie was, that Quicksilver scene is so much fun. Oh, I love that right scene. Away. So yeah, and we don't only- get any scenes like that for the Flash. So the only scene like that for me, and I guess to put my overall impressions of the Flash out there, um, you danny mentioned that like for you it feels like it's like two steps forward three steps back yeah for me it's more like two steps forward two steps back so he kind of uh-huh. they do some good things with him in this movie that i enjoyed but then like there's still other things that makes him make him like overall still neutral maybe i might maybe i might change it to like what you said yeah two step. Yeah. it didn't uh, really move it didn't do anything to change it i so, think the like, hot the hot dog scene has ruined it i, think, I don't know like okay, okay. I think that, kind of funny but, there's like we one of the things that we complained about for the Whedon cut was that he's too goofy and they spent too many scenes cementing that like get it he's goofy and weird he makes jokes yeah and like it didn't feel that bad in this and maybe that's just because they were spread out over like four hours instead of two but like um i personally really enjoyed seeing him just just running around the final uh, base uh in the last scene because he's like he needs to wait for Victor's call and he or signal and he's just like screaming at him like Victor Vic I can't maintain this for too long and he's like struggling to keep going because he knows he has to and he fails like they lose the mother boxes synchronize and reality seems to be like rewritten in like a second and that's when he's like speed force powers I guess it makes sense because he did describe it as like a layer over reality. So I guess Mm -hmm. that's why he was fine. Yeah. And then I, I love that they set up like as cruel as his scene with his father was where he's just like, forget about me. They use those lines that his father said to him as encouragement in that uh, scene again, where he's like, his father said to him, like, you're running in circles, you're running in, you're stuck in the past, you can make whatever future you want, uh, you want, you can be the best of the best, Barry. And in that scene, he's like, okay, Barry, you need to run faster than you've ever run before. And you need to do it right now. And he does. And he starts running so fast, the time is reversing. Like you, I thought the the effect of Superman getting like reconstructed, like bit by bit was super oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. And he, the voices in his head are going like, you can make whatever future you want, make whatever past you want, because they're all right now. And like, dad, if this doesn't work, I want you to know that your son was the one of the best of the best. And, and that really hit me. And I, I really liked that scene. I think that was but that's interesting. Like, but sadly, that's like one of the few scenes with the 
flash in the entire movie that I'm like, shit, mm. this is why he's in this movie. It just I think it needed to be more an... explained because I was sure. kind of confu- I was really confused during that. Scene. Thing. You know, I honestly... only caught that rewatching it this this morning yeah. and seeing and getting to the scene with his father and going like, oh shit, those are the exact words that he says in the end. So yeah, I didn't, even, I didn't that realize whole little that. speech he says to himself at the end. When I was watching that, I was like, hurry the fuck up! Like, yeah, seriously, I was <laughs> thinking the yourself, same thing. Yeah, like it just was... dragged. Yeah, I had the same feeling the initial time I watched it. I was like, you're the fastest man nowhere. alive you can speak and think way faster than you're and saying this right now like I, I, oh god oh no, sorry i just i was thinking out loud go ahead and finish but, I'll, I'll... like if he's saying all that to himself i get it it's encouragement that makes sense but that was like way too much like dialogue over just oh, to yeah. explain his motivations and what he's feeling and his emotions and he could have said that in one sentence in one line and we would have gotten it and it would have been short clear and we would have been like bam yeah. that's beautiful but they just had a really like i'm just so yeah fresh. it keeps coming back to what i said in the beginning that like there this movie draws out a lot of scenes more than it needs to yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah not that and i don't enjoy it but it's like yeah, this scene could have been like 30 seconds instead of a minute like it, it just felt like extra cringy super cheesy but not mm-hmm. in, like a superhero campy way it was just like all right dude we get it like Hurry mm-hmm. up, finish, get the shit uh, done, because like this, I, it's been three and a half hours already. Like, should we switch to oh my, after that, should we switch to villains? Yeah, I was yeah, about I, to say I, I, we, you guys want to move on to the yeah. Let's let's keep going. Choose next. Sure. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm like, there's a little bit, but I'm like, ah, it's not worth it. <laughs> Uh, right, I think right, we right. all got our thoughts across. Yeah, pretty, I think we yeah. did. Yeah. So are we just skipping Batman and Wonder Woman? No, oh, no, 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 no. We're, 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 we're done with Flash. Let's keep going. All right, can I just start? I'll do Batman. Can I just start it? No, we're doing the smaller. No, yeah. Brandon. Brandon was gonna do two characters. He was gonna do like a big character, and then like a couple side characters. Oh, Wonder Woman, yeah. right? Oh, no, yeah. no, we're doing the, no, the no, villain. We, we, we did doing, Flash, uh, and then yeah, okay. Oh, oh, that's right. Deadlines. Sorry, we're doing Deathstroke and all them. Death See, that's, how, that's how minuscule they were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why. Uh, Deathstroke. Okay, I terrible that, goatee. I, <laughs> yes like that's <laughs> I, I do get the whole like we're gonna set up the batman film and but that was yes un, yeah i thought that was kind of cool and that kind of set up the next film but it didn't happen so i was like eh, blah. That, that's what yeah. it, i heard that and i was just like oh yeah that, that, been really, like that was film. too much of a dude cheese. when lex told him like who batman was i was like oh shit what <laughs> and so it's obvious i like that they did kind of set up that deathstroke and batman have a little bit of history together yeah like, that's kind of yeah. cool. let me guess an eye for an eye and i was like, I was like that's ah. cool <laughs> uh, yeah i really okay. enjoyed that like i just a deathstroke i was like all right cool i mean yeah we saw him i feel like we just got to see him a little bit more and it wasn't really anything else if you're gonna special. expand upon it th- have show deathstroke break yeah. uh, lex Luthor out of arkham asylum that was it, an original idea for this hmm. script and i thought we were gonna get that lex yeah was supposed to break him out of this and i was like okay maybe you know when they panned out and you see arkham asylum yeah i was like we're gonna see deathstroke just fucking up some people right now just watch and it, it never happened so do you think that's because that they that they were told like okay now you're, it's like one of the things where you know he, they could have kept making it longer and longer and that was where they kept trying to rein them in where they're like you don't need to do that much or yeah that epilogue like that. was like a half hour on its own yeah I well, think that's probably all... what happened. They were like, yo, because he probably, are you kidding? Like, I feel like Snyder would be like, oh, you, you know I want to do this. And they are probably like, stop. I want to say You know how Marvel sets up like one movie at a time? I'm going to set up like five. Yeah. And I think, that, Marvel. I think that, you know, <laughs> the only actor who's gotten screwed over in the DCEU more than Henry Cavill is the guy who plays Destro. Joe Mangolio or whatever? Yeah. Joe Joe, Joe Man- Joe Mangelanello, yeah. yeah. Like, that suit Austin. looks so good. He, yeah, wants to play, he has said so many times in interviews that he wants to play Deathstroke so, so badly. Bad. And I'm just like, let him do it! Yeah, Dude, he's, that's... He's, he would look great. And I think the yeah. fighting scenes between him and Ben would be Oh my god, it'd be big, amazing. Like, yeah. yeah. He's and a they, peacock they chief, this... you gotta let him fly. Dude, can Dude, you imagine the... done, like a standalone Deathstroke movie? Oh, yeah. easily. Yeah. Do that. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine that standalone Flash Thompson movie where he becomes Agent Venom? Oh, crazy. I want that so yeah. fucking bad. Don't, don't, I, I don't love date. Agent Venom so much. James. He's gonna, get, he's gonna lose his mind. When it was no, I was just saying because uh, Joe Mangelino was a Flash in the original Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's like, right. yeah. he's like, he's like 30 years old in high school. Can we, yeah. can we, not, can we not do this right now? But, <laughs> Anyways, yeah, Deathstroke. That's, yeah. that's just Deathstroke. Like, there's not really much you can say. Yeah. Joker. Oh, Joker, God. however. Okay, wait. I have always said that we needed 
like to see a bit more of Jared's like uh, Joker to flesh him out a little bit more to be like to really see what was going on. And I, uh, again, this kind of ties into the nightmare sequence. This nightmare sequence was very jammed in, but you know what? It felt like a fan film. It felt like something bat in the sun that like maybe their early work. And I actually like hated this whole conversation really oh, really man. dude i, wow. I thought, it was I was like, I thought you were gonna start loving it it was goofy yeah. it was like not connected it was random he tried to be every incarnation of joker out there it was unoriginal it didn't vibe well wow it had no purpose dude, yeah it was there you go keep it going i like this <laughs> like uh. they hyped up all this stuff so much and jared had a second chance and he did worse i feel in this than he did the other one because at least the other one he was trying to be his own joker at least he was trying to be his own this one he was just trying to mimic keith ledger this one he was just trying to be like all all the past that we've had batman's killed so many motherfuckers how is the joker not a lot uh, uh, led dead (laughs) yo i I can't even say it i'm so frustrated how is the joker so fucking alive if like he's killed everybody else out there what let it rip brandon let it rip Yes. I'm sorry. I am so angry, and I've been holding Let this in for days. Yes, he's turning, he's turning I, red. I, I love he it. He actually is. Oh. If you're watching the third play, yeah. Oh, I'm flipping. I'm flipping right now. Oh, yeah. It seems kind of reminiscent of the storyline, and I don't, re- I don't, I haven't read it, but I, I only know the artwork of it. But like the storyline where there's like dark future Batman in the duster with like Joker's head in a jar. That, that story so wasn't better. That, no, that story had a horrible good. ending. Yeah, it was talking about last night. Yeah, last night. It was nothing like that. That's that's was, I mean, that's more mm, of like a. All right, okay, anyway, anyway that's like I'm a about thing. I'm about to pull a Comron level plot twist on you guys because I actually disagree with Brandon just a little bit. What? Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay, I actually oh thought God. that. I thought, well, God, who plays the Joker again? What the hell? Is Jared, Jared Leto. Leto. Jared Leto. Yeah, him. Okay, I thought Jared Leto actually did an okay job. They just gave him terrible lines and a terrible design. And the and the setup of the scene didn't make any sense. It was pointless. Any sense. I hated it. But but for what Jared Leto had to work with, I was like, he did a thousand times better job than he did in Suicide Squad for that little that he had to work with and that terrible dialogue and a terrible setup. That you know, was it, it. it's not saying much. Still, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I know it's not saying much at all. The bar was set so low, but I'm just like, I'm taking a win where I can get it here, guys. I'm. I'm- I'm loving both of them. I love the I love the polar opposites here. Just like where the one went and where the other went. I'm just like, oh my goodness. I, I hate yeah. that. I hate that scene with Superman hunting everybody down and everything. It makes no sense. You're right. Why hasn't Batman just you know killed the so, Joker? Why did he care about Harley Quinn? Why? But I'm taking that little win in this scene. So he's so, looked better. I could give him that. But that's right, 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 right. yeah, because he Yo, didn't have the I, damage tattoo. Can I? Can I know, I, huh? Can I know? Okay. Yeah. All right. So. The, the the interesting thing about this it feels so it feels so like rushed in there because it was rushed in y'all know this was the reshoot this was the yeah. thing that was like not in it originally and they went last minute like fuck get the shit in and like prodded it in there and the whole thing too it's like it i i would look at it this way and the reason why i it, it, i like it more so is because it's more of like a it's like not really but it did happen but it but it didn't because his whole thing was, you know, we know ne- what if this never happens? What if Ben Affleck is not Batman anymore? Jared Leto is not Joker anymore. They never got to interact. And that's the whole point. He was like, it's not really for the story. It's not for a continuation. Let's just throw in a conversation here. Albeit not really a good one, but that's why it's not, un- it's not really related to anything. It's very much just him going, Hey, what if they had the conversation you wanted them to have? And that's what it is. It's not really make a short film. Don't oh, add it to oh, a I know, but that's the but so that's, that's the that that's the whole thing with it. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. None of that works. That's the whole. It's the whole weirdness of it. And the only thing is that interaction. That's the only point he did it for was just to be like, all right, finally we did it because we don't know if it will actually ever happen again. Even if there was a short or something like that, you don't know if they actually could get that to happen or anything like that too. And with it too, like. I personally agree with Danny. Like, it's like, I think he could still do it. Like, I don't, I don't think he's been given the right cards, just like Henry Cavill hasn't been given the right cards. Like, it's not their fault that they're being sent in these directions with those characters that Uh, it seems like they could do a good job with if just given better tools to work with there. 
You see, I, I thought that when they were going to bring the Joker back, that he was just going to show up on the yacht with Lex Luthor and everything, and they were planning the Injustice League. I mm-hmm. thought that that's what they were going to use him for. I was like, and I was actually looking forward to that. I was like, expand upon that that scene if you're going to do anything, but they didn't, and it's just you know. And I will to to Jared Leto and Ben Affleck's credit because they're both good actors. They did sell it that they had a history together. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really okay. like that conversation. Check Just for out. the the implied history, yeah. well, not an implied what, stated history. <laughs> what they did wrong with this is that they set up an explanation for a scene that is no longer in this film. They set up the card, and the card is an aspect in the weed and cut nightmare scene, and it's like you completely cut that scene. So this was card, it? yeah, it was cut. You don't get that nightmare scene. I just, I thought the Joker was just like pulling out a random thing and was just like, no, it, you know what? Batman's truce gun. for now. But like, oh, how did they not was already have BBS? a truce? Was that it was in BBS. BBS? That was BBS. Oh, oh. right, right. right. Okay. Thinking, so, so, but also, cool. you give Snyder money to finish making his vision. The and he thing, wasted okay, it on Alex, this. <laughs> Alex Ross said this in an interview, and he's one hundred percent right. Then you stick to your original script and you stick to your original idea. The fact that you get to go and add and do all this other stuff with the extra money, no. Look how bad some of these scenes came out with that money could have been invested to. This was a total waste and not even part of his original vision. So it's just like crap. He was just like, this would be a good idea. Let's just toss it in. This was so wasted. And you you put so much focus on a nightmare sequence for a 15, 10-minute thing. It is crap. This was a stuffed in thing. If you're going to do a nightmare thing and hype it up as much as you did, this should have been a whole fucking chapter in the movie. And instead, they just tried to slap it on like a sticker and it just makes it like a poorly done idea. They filmed it for a trailer. That's what yeah. it looks like. It's shot yeah. like, a, like it was for a trailer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it this, doesn't even yeah. say that we live in a society line. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which was, was yeah, Leto's idea. <laughs> I think there's also like more scenes like there, there's so much we didn't get and it's like I think something we'll talk about later because I don't even I don't even fucking know how we're gonna do the parts after this we'll see <laughs> but like uh, the whole nightmare scene Brandon and I have our own complaints on that for sure because we talked about it after the movie uh, about all of it but yeah we'll, maybe we'll get to that if we can but I guess yeah. my biggest complaint with the scene is just that yeah it doesn't make any sense that of all the people left alive like the few people left alive. Flash, for some reason, cyborg. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, Batman decides to keep the Joker around, even though he definitely just for a laugh would kill them all in their sleep. Uh, so that doesn't make any sense. But I did at least enjoy the conversation because it's like an interesting conversation. It just doesn't make any sense why it's happening. Yeah, yeah, but even Deathstroke's like, why the hell did you leave him I, alive? Yeah, he's like, he's <laughs> like, a good idea. And he's like, you think? And it's just, I, I, those interactions together, at least with each other, felt and that was also super interesting to me just that you had just had the scene where lex luther was like here's bruce wayne's uh like alter or this is who batman is now i can go kill him and then somehow at some point in the future all that shit changes and the yeah they become allies guess deathstroke didn't win spoiler alert and i just Uh, i don't want to see how that happened it's just right eh. you know i i I know why I'm at fault with this. It's because I went into that scene with an expectation. Mm. I mean, that's everyone. your problem. All right, all right. So next, next thing, next thing, please. Okay, we're just skipping over me again. Okay, cool. Wait, uh, go, go, then go. Uh, I'll just sum it up. The scene didn't need to exist. It was just there to look cool, and you know, uh, Brandon unleashed a fiery hell on it, and I love it. I'm gonna, yeah. I, I was, I was, I was rooting for you. I was like, yes, I'm, I'm rooting for you, Brandon. I was like Nikki in the corner for Rocky. He's like, go, get him. Yeah. No, the scene was pointless. And I'm sorry, Jared Leto, you have not proven to be a Joker. Get out of here. Go. You have failed too many times. We know it is the producer's fault, obviously, because they're getting too involved saying the Joker should be in this. We also know it's Jared Leto's fault because he obviously doesn't have a grasp of the character and he doesn't even have a proper personal take in the character because he took the whole preparation wrong apparently and just went about it terribly and you know what i'm gonna say it i don't even think he looks that cool in that design with the vest and everything with all the badges no, and all that. No, like no, what was, up, what was, up, with the, what was up with all those screenshots with like the jesus crown and everything yeah, and really like what so the weird. fuck it, it just yeah it just Is leaves that, more questions than answers that's just like uh, no it doesn't yeah. leave questions it leaves me going you're just no doing... you're just like what was that for 
That's I feel like Jared Leto just really liked no, the costume and I, hired I, a photographer to take pictures of him yeah, for a day. I, he was I know an Instagram girl for like the entire promo yeah, section of this movie. He had so much fun. Probably. I I don't have any questions. I know what that was for. That was to get people to watch it on HBO Max and get subscriptions up and get sales going and get stream numbers. That's what it was for. I'm not saying the fucking question. Paid for it. Yeah. So you know what? Get him the fuck out. Leave the Joker alone at this point. Do not involve him in the DCU anytime soon. Leave it to Joaquin Phoenix. You don't even need a sequel to that movie. But you know what? Leave at this it. point, I'll don't fucking touch it. yeah. At no this more point, Joker. It... We're tired yeah. of him. Get rid of it. I just get rid keep, of it. I keep thinking right, like right, Mugatu's right, right, right. voice in my I'm head. Like literally hearing the peaking in my Joker. Eyes. So hot right now. All yeah. right. Anyways, it sucked. Done. It looks cool on paper. It looks cool when you're looking at a screen. But you know what? It doesn't need to be in the movie. It had no reason to be in the movie. It was horribly executed. It was a waste of money. And you, you should have just made a short film instead yeah. of just yeah. slapping the sticker on at the like Brandon was saying. Instead of slapping a sticker on the movie, just make it a short film. Just yeah. be like, hey, come support this crowdfunded DC short film I want to make. That would have been so much more all, impactful that would have been cool yeah. all you would the, probably got all they could easily do for hbo max like an elseworlds show yeah just yeah. like how marvel is doing a what if show all the yeah. night all the nightmare scenes in this movie feel like after credit scenes sprinkled throughout the movie yeah all right are we moving on to the next character yeah, what's going on, on the next thing yes are we rolling the dice for the next yeah. character yeah between yeah. you two yeah all right who's left it's just uh and who's left? me and Cameron. Cameron, who do you want to choose wonder, wonder woman three, cyborg Batman. Oh shit! There's four. Oh god. Uh, four. What four? Oh, Aquaman. Yeah. yeah. Well, you could do. You could. I think you could combine Wonder Woman and Aquaman. And yeah. Probably, yeah. 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 I guess I'll take. Uh, can I just? I, I guess I'll combine um, Cyborg and Batman. It's sure. Okay. Yeah. Go right. for it. All right. Uh, start off with Cyborg here. We were fucking robbed, bro. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's a travesty. <laughs> It that is his scenes were cut. I just, oh my, I was too loud there myself. Shit, Dude, like but, I um, was nearly to tears in multiple scenes. Like I, yeah. when his mom died in the car crash. When, when his dad was like about to die, and he's just like, no, no. I was just like, oh my god. No. I, Man. I felt like we were you gonna say, Brandon. You guys obviously have not seen Doom Patrol. That's all I'm saying. I have. I'm working through it now. You guys oh. have. Oh, I can argue against that, but I want to hear what comment says. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, looking through it you know we had the crappy whedon version you know we saw everything of that and it's like barely he's barely in it he's, he's just kind of there and you're just kind of like okay what's going on with him whereas this one you feel like everything they talked about him everything they teased you get everything and more where they're like yeah he's the heart of the justice league and he's the heart of the movie and you're like really yeah i watched that movie i didn't see that and you watch this and you're like holy shit you don't get it in the beginning but once it starts building up and you keep getting more and more and more of him it makes so much more sense because that i think was a really great job of doing like a full-on origin in this movie yeah and it yeah. worked out so it well it was the one origin that was deserved in this film that yeah movie. and i love the scene where he's listening to the tape his father left for him yeah, and so every it's explaining movie. exactly how powerful he is and the first thing he does with his powers is like save that like mother like single mother of two. Oh, that he's made me like, cry dude i, I was I, just like I, oh. he's a hero he's a good person like yeah, well he, even he, for his friend in the dean's office like that whole spiel yeah was... the whole thing is he is he sticks up for the little one it's not very much like see something on the street do something he he looks in for those in need and he straight up just helps them where it feels like the ones that are invisible that have no one to help them because they're not even noticed. And he's, so, them. he's more Superman than Superman is. I yes. love this one like little uh, effect, I guess, or wh whatever you want to call it, where like that scene where he's watching in person uh, the, uh, the woman who he just gave like a hundred thousand dollars to, he's watching her like happily go like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God, my life has changed. And like, I don't have to worry about whether I can feed my kids for the night and stuff like that he turns around and starts walking away and like a couple people that he passes by on the street look at him like he's a monster and i'm just like damn that's fucking interesting that like yeah he's that do he's contrast. doing good shit but like because of what he is people look at him like he's something else and mm -hmm. i i really liked that subtle effect i love that yeah and what with everything that happens he looks at himself as a freak and this whole time he has a very set mindset of everything how he perceives himself how he feels like people perceive him how he feels alone and you do get you get 
weirdly different instances of Superman and Batman in him. You get the wanting to help people of Superman. You get the tragedy of Batman. And one by one, it's to the point where he just kind of is like, I have nothing. I have no one. Yeah, and he goes he, to meet Diana and he says, I don't need anyone anymore. Yeah. She's like, I don't yeah. think you think that's true. And to I the love point, that connection between the two. Yeah. And when he gets into the mother box and it's like the big test there. And it's the whole thing of it's everything he's been saying about himself in the beginning of the, like in the beginning of his arc is just like, Hey, this is everything you wanted. Right. And also like, you, you don't want to feel these things anymore. Yeah, it's like, but we can because, fix you and you don't have to be alone anymore. And he yeah. says, I'm not broken and I'm not alone. And, and I was like, like, Oh my God, I love that. And yeah. it's, it's from all of the, shit he's been doing with the other leaguers and stuff and it's from like the things that diana said to him and what other people have said to him and things like that like it's, it's all been building up to him because the whole thing is like you know it's like you get jason moa in there as, as arthur and he's like i thought you didn't care and he's like you know i do and it's like even there the guy who accused him of potentially being a traitor is the one defending him and like the one that like really feels for him and things like that and you, you feel that growth through it and yeah you know you want more and it there obviously could have been a lot more depth to a lot of it too, but with what we get and in a team movie, never no less, like they do such a good job of conveying all of that with the tools they're dealt. And it works out so well where he went from a character I couldn't even remember was in this to mm -hmm. like, he was the mainstay. He was the one I think about when it's over pretty much. Like, it's just like, Oh yeah, this was like, this was cyborg. This was his film. So, and Oh, go ahead, Brandon. Sorry. I would say responding to Brandon's thing too. I think the cool thing about the Doom Patrol one compared to the Cyborg one is that they are both two incarnations, but I really can't complain about either one. Like I really admire them both and I'm heartbroken. We're not getting another uh, Ray Fisher film. Um, I, I totally know what you mean on that. I don't want to hear more, but I just, I, I can't unsee how great this performance was and his voice, his presentation, everything. I think the whole thing leading up to him this was one of the flawless parts. And again, this is part of the first three hours of the film that I really admired. And everything else I've complained about is that last hour. And this is just one of those things that I was like, I can't believe we were, this was taken. And it just shows how wrong Josh Whedon was and anyone else who was involved in just cutting all these scenes and not even attempting to give this guy credit or the credit that he deserves and that he worked for on this. Cause this was, they really brought out his character. However, yeah. it, a lot of it, doesn't really tie directly to the film like his powers and abilities of what he can do and you know what his what he's like as a person that doesn't help solve the final problem at the end of the film with the fight yeah he has the mother box thing and he does tie into it but it's like that's kind of an expected thing even if he didn't announce all these like abilities it, it just so, makes you want the solo movie even more because you know it's the right place for it all. Yeah, like it built the character and the character was really good and I loved it, but it didn't contribute to the overall oh, thing. Okay. Um, I'm kind of bouncing off of what Kamran was just saying because you mentioned a solo film. Um, Ray Fisher did a great job. The, he got robbed in the Whedon cut. Um, he definitely did. He This was, to me, one of the only and the biggest improvement of this movie over the Whedon cut but the big thing to me that's holding this back is that because I don't know anything about Cyborg um, but based off of this story and what we got in the performance and everything and the characters involved and the weight behind it he out of everybody in this movie needed and deserved an origin film before they yeah. made this yeah. oh yeah this, yeah. They, it was such a rush job with his story. It's still, even in a four-hour movie, I felt like it was a rush job. I was like, no, you need to take your time going over this. This cannot, you. he is not a character. If he's this important that you're building up to be that gets introduced as a side character in this movie. But this is also the same universe that introduced Batman as a side character too, so... Yeah. You know, there's that. Um, well, I agree with you on that because they had so I'm so sorry. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to agree with Daniel Pass. All of his stuff, like his origin, that could have been in a like an actual film. A yeah. good movie. Like, Imagine the payoff. That, yeah. Uh, like so, even the whole Wonder Woman scene between him, that could have been in that film and how she gets recruited into the Justice League, which leads into the Justice League film. That would have been the formula. Yeah. Um, 
I was going to say, see, the thing is, you get that time. The only thing that sets the Doom Patrol version back is the budget because it's a TV show. But like you get that time and investment with Cyborg in the Doom Patrol show. So that's why I feel like it's more it's more, you know, engaging and more empathetic with the character because you're given an episodic origin story with Cyborg. Yeah. Where in this movie, again, my biggest, biggest, biggest problem with this film is the commitment it expects me to have to everything. It expects me to have a commitment to the origin story of the Flash, Aquaman, and Cyborg. And then you do this abrupt thing where you're kind of choosing origin stories, where you're going to briefly kind of talk about the Flash's origin. You're going to hint at Aquaman, and you're just going to go full force with Cyborg. And the thing is, you're not going to pay respects to the character properly doing it in a Justice League film. Everything happens so fast for a, a movie this long. You're given like a five minute introduction to his mother and then you kill her and then next thing you know you get like another five minutes explaining how he becomes cyborg basically and you're like okay and then it's like all right we got to keep the ball rolling let's keep going and then you're supposed to you know know everything about cyborg and everything and it's like you want you're trying to get your audience to feel for the character while also making them commit to other characters and it's just a disrespect to that character like yeah, we do yeah, not get broad. enough time to yeah. feel the impact of his parents or anything. It's like, why, yeah. no, why should we yeah. care? So I the think thing was more... like, everyone's telling me it's sad. And it, sorry, Connor, what are you going to say? No, keep going. Keep going. Everyone was telling me it was sad. And I'm like, okay, yeah, it's, it's sad. His parents died horribly, but I'm like, you kind of showed it for two seconds and you know, you don't, you know, I, I was like, okay, uh, next scene, I guess. And it's just like, I didn't really feel anything. And I, I felt like, you know, they could have done better with the character. And I feel like there was a better chance for Ray Fisher to really shine as cyborg. And, you know, I'm not familiar with the character really, but I feel like it could have been really awesome in his own solo film. So, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I feel like, so, go ahead. It's funny because uh i mean i'm just gonna say this like it just it's it's just funny because like we have slightly different feelings i guess like emotionally about certain parts and stuff like that but otherwise we're ironically like if, if you look at everything we just said about the cyber part we pretty much agreed with each other on everything when you really think about it like it's just we're saying it slightly different uh, ways. i thought but, they could have done better with the character i know but i mean like we we feel like he's he does a good job we feel like he need, deserves a solo movie we feel like there could be more and i think not really i i feel like they didn't write him well really no. i literally t- really? i texted homer and like immediately like holy shit i want a cyborg movie i was like okay they're kind of just using cyborg as the guy to explain everything and kind of you know they're they're really wanting us to see that he's a great character and i have no doubt about that but like I don't know. I feel like I, they're kind of just doing like backstory and exposition dump with him. Like they definitely use him for that purpose. Like especially and, when they're like, "How did the mother? How did you even get the mother box?" And he's like, "Let me show you." Yeah, and again, <laughs> yeah, we're just given it. we're just given so little time. I'm like, okay, I'm not really sold on this. You know, and, like, well, uh, what the connecting piece to everything, I can totally understand because he was made from the mother box. But I see what you mean on like how broad everything was like him being established and then still being that connecting piece. I would agree with, but like him being made from the mother box. I see why he is that the part that the structure, the root, the baseline to it all, you know, like that's that's what I feel makes sense about this. It's actually it's funny because you get this in one other moment before not in this, but it feel the the most similarity between this is Martian Manhunter's intro and in the Justice League pilot cartoon. Yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. That, like that's his yeah. role. Yeah, that's uh, Tyborg's role into this. Yeah, yeah. So. And you, and you know what a waste of Joe Morton too. Joe Morton, he played a. If you guys don't know, he played a Miles Bennett in Terminator Two, the guy who creates the Terminators. He's a good actor and he's underrated. And he's, I think, he gets underused a lot. I was happy that he was cast as Cyborg's father, and he just oh, they don't yeah. do it. He. I, uh, I was wondering where you're going with that. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, no, I thought he was pretty good in this. I mean, no, he did a good job. He did a good job with what he had. He deserved more. But also, yeah, it's like solo movie with all of them. Yeah. And then potentially, like, it, yeah, there's there's so much more you could, like, you you want more of all these characters. Yeah. You even want more of his mom. You, you want I, more of Yeah. All. I wasn't yeah. sad when he died in the movie because he was dying. I was sad because I was like, well, we're not going to get to see any more of him in their yeah. relationship. That's it. Well, and more... they grow in the you... comics and Young Justice. Yeah. Like Those yeah, are all in, great examples. In Doom, Patrol, in Doom Patrol, you definitely get much more of the dynamic that he like 
butts heads with his dad a lot. Yeah. His dad is literally trying yeah. to control him. Yeah. And, and he's the, just like, I just want to be a kid who also fights crime. And then like the origin story in Doom Patrol of how he becomes cyborg. That one is That's brutal. It's hardcore, dude. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. And like they make you like sit, you know, sit with it for a while where this one, it's just kind of like, that's it done car accident. And then, you know, moving on. And it's just like, yeah, it's just it kind of okay. Back to that root I problem, I, of that rush, the rush. Yeah, they skipped a really, lot with this origin story. I don't know. I just, I just really felt that moment when his dad visits, sees him in the hospital, and the nurse says, "Like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, your, your wife didn't make it, and your son isn't going to either." And he walks over, and he's like, barely able to speak, and he's just like, "I won't let you die. I won't Dude, allow I it." I and I was just like, I, "Man, I can feel that he is a father who's just like." He didn't take for he took for granted what he had before, and now that he's about to lose it, he's he, like has that madness of like I need to do anything I can to hold on to what I still have. Again, yeah. Joe Morton, he's a good actor. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I said, it's like yeah. an, and I know what you guys are saying too, especially, and it's it's like I said, it's like with what they do have and what they do deal with, like I can't help it. It's they, they like multiple times. With, I want to say at least twice of the two of the times I teared up was because of these moments they had with Cyborg and his family. And I can't help it. It's just that's how it got me, and I they they work with me, and I like I enjoyed it. No. But uh, moving on, Batman, Bruce Wayne. Uh, you know, I think I almost want to take back being uh, Ben Affleck being the best Batman on screen. <laughs> really, <laughs> really. You know, I thought he was just like neutral for me. Like uh, uh, he, he was, was kind of same. a background guy the whole time. Yeah, he yeah. did at least he was more effective in this version like the i remember us saying in in the uh whedon cut that like man is batman like useless or what like he barely does anything but at least in this like when he gets into the nightcrawler it doesn't just like fall the fuck back down the uh silo and do nothing like he actually like tears the shit out of a bunch of parademons for a bit until it like falls off the side and like he's actually effective in the final fight as opposed to just like flying around or running around in the uh, Batmobile. But like, other than that, like his story beats were basically the same. Like, yeah, Batman's for just him. He's about the same. He is me. the least changed character least, between uh, the two versions. I will say at least he's not as he's not trying to get under people's skin in this one, though. Mm-hmm. There is a big difference there. If you look at the weird, like conflict, Whedon, Buffy style shit that they have in the first one, where it's like, you're Steve Trevor, blah, 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 blah. None of that's in this. You don't have him trying to get under Diana's skin or anything like that. Uh, you don't have those weird interactions. Oh, right. Yeah. So all of that's not in there. Yeah. So it, that at least is there. And I did notice that. And I felt like that was an improvement, but it's still, yeah, it didn't feel. You're, you're just all of this is making you want it it's making you itch for like i just want a movie with batman because we're not really getting him at the same time at all here no. right and, he, he's, and he's the one assembling but not much more than that besides being an awesome one-man army against Batman. you know yeah. batman's just there to be two things he's the one to make sell tickets because batman's the one bringing the justice league together and the other is he he serves as the character to Wonder Woman where it's like, well, Diana, please explain to me your backstory and everything you know about Darkseid. Right. And then, you know, he just serves that for the audience where he's like, no way. What does that mean? What is this? Like, that's all he serves. And this is a big case. Oh, yeah, huh? I think it's most prevalent with him that, you know, like I said, I trashed Josh Whedon a lot when we did the, the Josh Whedon review. I was just like, he doesn't know how to shoot Batman. It looks so bad and everything. I was shocked how many scenes again that were really bad with Batman in this movie that were Snyder's. I mean, the fight scenes with him, I was like, you gave us warehouse and this is what you're giving us in this movie with Batman. Oh, okay. So the, the only thing that came off as like truly clever for me was like, he has Alfred build him gauntlets that can dissipate energy shots. Oh, that was, that was yes. really tough. And yeah. yes. that was initially so he could defend himself against the parademon weapons. Cause I guess he, had seen them before i don't i can't remember well, no they it. they were it was pretty much to prepare prepare for anything really because they were so used to the, like the kryptonian they, they utilized the kryptonian weaponry i uh i guess so i don't know i just i thought that it was cool that they set that up for him to use it against the parademons and it works and then later on it double is uh, useful when superman shows up and he straight up tries to kill bruce and he like blocks like reflexively with his gauntlets and it 
it actually saves him from Superman's like uh, laser uh, vision or heat vision. And it like overloads the gauntlets and he's got to like throw it uh, off before it explodes. That's like one of the few things where I was like, that's actually a clever like setup from earlier and used it later. Too easy. I guess. Yeah. Uh, the, the, way he was, the way he was just sitting there too, like Bruce or like Clark, Clark. I'm just like, you're Batman. You, you know, know like, that? like uh, again, this is kind of me approaching it from what I've learned. And I, I think Danny could back this up because we had the same professor. Um, when you have a scene where you have a character in we like talk about Ann Galger? Yes. Shout uh when you have Anne. a yeah, I know, right? When you have a scene <laughs> where you uh you set up the character in a scenario kind of thing, and then you have them um get in sort of in some sort of conflict, and then to just like basically be like, All right, this is how they got out of it. Uh it was like two minutes and we're moving on to the next scene where it's just like you didn't make the character struggle, really. You didn't make the character go through anything. It was just kind of like and this is, I'm talking about the gauntlets kind of as like a major example where it was like, oh shit, uh, Superman's going to hit. I was going to say Spider-Man for some reason. <laughs> Superman's going to hit me with his eye lasers and let me block it with my gauntlets that conveniently block energy. And then it's just kind of like, oh, that saved me. But I, one broke and then I'm going to block with the other one. And it's just kind of like, okay. And that's how Batman lived. And it's just, it's just too easy. It, okay. it just felt too easy to just insert that in there to be like, oh, my, my gauntlets that prevent the parademons from shooting me block superman's lasers too and like it's really weird though just thinking about this because i loved ben affleck as batman when i first saw bvs even though i didn't like the movie and i'm just thinking now after you know re-watching all the movies and seeing this and everything i'm just like why did i even like him it's not ben affleck's fault but it's just like what did they do give us to make me like him oh yeah one of our biggest complaints was uh for the whedon cut was that like they whedon seemed to try to make him into uh tony stark tony stark yeah. especially with the joke about like you know what's your power again uh, I'm, I'm just rich oh and they still had that scene in yeah that was mm-hmm. still in there so that was that was a snyder thing apparently mm-hmm. yeah. yeah including so, the snack hole joke that we were all like Ugh. and it's just like you know everything with batman just seemed too easy yeah like it was just kind of like yeah. You know, you, you gave a few scenes where he's able to fight back, but it's just kind of like he's kind of useless. And then when you want it to be too easy, it's effective. And it's just kind of, I don't know, maybe that's just how I took it. And there Batman was no turning is, point. Oh, sorry. For, there was no turning point for Batman because if he's the one that's trying to assemble the league, everything fell through. Everything happened just right. His only, you know, thing where he failed was like Aquaman didn't say yes right away. But yeah, I know, right? Every single thing he wanted. There was no like he just kept on. There's no conflict. There's no conflict with him, and he had yeah. no structure to his character. Yeah, I, 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 I will say the Bruce yeah. Wayne moments in the beginning. I loved. I, I love yeah. that we got to see the like when he the whole him being in the plane and the questioning the conversations. Those were all pretty awesome, and that was feeling. I was, yeah. I was like, we're finally getting it. We're getting this cool Batman. We're getting it. But as the film progressed, it just got, it just went down from there. And by the very end, I was like, even Kato, when we were watching it, she's like, Ben is really stiff in this version for some reason. Like he can't really maneuver in that suit at yeah, all. Yeah, it, he doesn't shoot the action scenes for him very well at all, and it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it, oh my god, what was it? this movie? I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Go back to Barry. I, I forgot what I was uh, going to say. I mean, Barry gets shot because Batman is doing his job by getting all the parademons, and mm-hmm. the parademon still shoots Barry. I feel like if that was a Batman moment, like Batman would have got that oh. parademon like right before, maybe he would have missed. And then Batman, like Barry thought he was going to get shot. And then Batman's there. And there's like every time they're about like a different pair of demons about to fi- uh, fire on him, like battering hits him in the yes. neck. <laughs> I want to like, I want to say this. I want to say this too. This is what I remember. I was going to say, I don't know if this is Canon in the comics, but I know it happened in the, the justice league unlimited cartoon. Batman is the first and only person oh. to ever dodge dark sides omega beams he really? successfully yeah. did it i could never see this batman dodging his omega beams no i don't know i mean the way he moves he's so bulky in the suit maybe that's the suit is i don't know maybe I'm just yeah, making excuses yeah. they ben tried Affleck. to make like, him use his grapple hook away, but, way too often because he in the comics he mostly just uses that to get from rooftop to rooftop he doesn't yeah. other than uh, like i mean if you want to get specific he broke kgb's neck or kgb's neck yeah. 
uh, with the grappling hook. That's the yeah. last time I saw I kinda, it being effective. I kind of go well, off of the Arkham games the way he uses his gadgets. Well, yeah, there's yeah. that. Yeah. Like, but it, the they kept making him use his grapple hook in this movie in like really weird, unnecessary ways. Like there, there was a shot where he like he kicks a parademon through a door, mm -hmm. but he does it by like grapple hooking over the door and then swinging through the door. And I'm just like, yeah. you could have just done like a flying kick through the door. I don't, yeah. You, the, be what? the best <laughs> use of the grapple gun is ironically in one of like the most mad Batman movies in Batman returns when he shoots a grapple gun behind the guy into the wall and pulls the wall out and hits him yeah. with it. But that's something <laughs> just... that Batman would do. You he relied way too much on that specific thing, and but yeah. it's weird how bad, like Ben's like whole thing was in this film. But god damn, when you talk about Batman, you cannot exclude how fucking amazing this Alfred was. Like oh, I can't yeah. say, <laughs> does he? Alfred, Jeremy Irons. Alfred's the hero of this oh, movie. Oh, He's the one who yeah. does everything. Every scene with yeah. him, Wonder Woman, yeah. him and Batman. Every he was good he from the get go. He was like the only. Good parts, yeah, really. Wait, Jeremy Irons is a perfect, yeah. insane perfect. actor. Wait a minute. Oh. Does, does Batman throw more batter any more batterings than the one he throws at the Flash? No. No. Oh my he, god. He oh, never really you, uh, throws batterings in movies in general. Side it's note, side weird. note. Huh. If you go on YouTube, you can watch a comparison of that scene from the Weeding Cut and the Snyder Cut together, and you can literally see how in the Snyder Cut they draw out the scene. It's kind of funny, like how they make oh, it wow. longer. It's just uh, like yeah. camera camera panning. And I, um, I want to say this too. Oh, sorry. Were you going to say something else, Brandon? I was going to say, what the fuck was up with that bad tank at the end? Like that dark night returns. What purpose was that though? Like that is again, it's like it's everyone was hyped. Everyone, filler. everyone was hyped. Like sharing it on Instagram. Like we got I the thought, bat tank and like. I, sorry, I, is I this was going to be nightmare, honestly? And then it wasn't. no, Me too. it was, Me it, was too. Point, it was pointless. It was to get people to get subscriptions. That's all it was. It was just. It was literally like the bat tank. It was like, oh shit, he's gonna use that when he fights like you know all the parademons and shit. Like maybe he's gonna bring it in, but no, it's just there to show Ben fucking staring off in the yeah, night. Dude, do you know that wasn't even Ben. If you pay attention, that is all CGI right there. Yeah, yeah. that was that was, <laughs> added in. That was definitely added. Batman, that was definitely yeah. added in. And, but you, uh, you get what I'm saying though, like it was just yeah. make more pointless Batman stuff. Well, and exactly, because another can't even th get Ben to do it. Like another thing too was. that I really cannot like. I'm not a huge fan of Wonder Woman and Batman being a couple. You know, I, I think it's cute, but it's not anything. I Wonder Woman is just an independent character. She's somebody I outside of Steve Trevor, I really can't see her being with anybody really. Oh, I, Were you also? I, know, I, I got animated series kind of. To basically yeah. i guess raised me in a much different way they, they yeah, did it yeah, they, yeah, pulled like it, they did it better but the thing i liked about the animated series what they did with that is that batman is still very confident around her he's very much in his zone all the time and she kind of pokes and teases him about that he was just like he goes i need to be protect he goes i can't be in a relationship with you because i need to protect the people i love and she smashes that like uh Garden. statue in front of him yeah, yeah she's just like I could think I could protect myself and everybody probably better than you can. So she teases him a little bit. And in this movie, Bruce is such a bumbling idiot around Diana. Yeah, yeah I told you. No he's, the, he's the guy. He's the guy going, well, Diana, explain more exposition to me. Tell me more about the dark side backstory. Well, but yeah, not, they, you know, like, that. It's just they both like grab the, a computer mouse together and it's like, oh, uh, uh, oops, oh I'm sorry. I touched yeah. my hand. Yeah. yeah. Like it's uh, so that's I honestly I, I'm. I'm still very much in a holy shit. I love Ben Affleck as Batman. I just really, really, really wanted, and I still want to see how he portrays himself directing his own film of being like Batman. I think because I mean, well, Ben hasn't like burned his bridges like half of these other characters. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah, still he, if they did it, there would still be hope. You know, it's like definitely. Yeah. I still want to see more. I, I even though yeah, because I I still think he would do an amazing job. I. Even though this I have no doubt about that background and whatever, but I, I yeah, I still want more of him. I, this we, doesn't make Suicide me this doesn't, Squad, yeah. BBS, that all proved it. You know what I mean? And this yeah, had like moments did. that were good and just moments that were just like, we know this is better. We've seen I, better. You I think Suicide that. Squad has the best Ben F like Batman that we've gotten uh, so far. Yeah, and it's sad, only like yeah. a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things like I'm willing to give it another shot if it's like a new director and everything yeah. with Ben Affleck, like I will, I'm for it. Same thing with like Cyborg. I, if you could like take those scenes and flesh them out in a movie and get like a better script going, I'm pretty sure he could do the character. Well, do the character some justice, but it's just like justice. You know, <laughs> you know like 
you know, same thing with Batman or not same thing with Batman, but with Batman, I'm like, oh, man, this is kind of burning me out here, you know, because remember, for a lot of us, as a reminder, you know, at least three of us in this chat right now, Batman encompasses a good amount of our lives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You who, know, who, like who would be like that? I don't, I don't uh, know I'm staring at him right now, but <laughs> <laughs> like. I'm being serious. Like between Cameron and Brandon and I, there's a lot of Batman shit going on in our world, you yeah. know, in general. And, you know, I'm getting to the point where, dude, like I'll read bats like bat books, but I'm getting fucking burnt out here. Like that's a whole like, uh, dude, I, yeah. I, you guys need to do an Apollo City episode and we should we should talk all about that. But then, yeah, um, I've but always, like, I love Batman, but they're running him and they're running that character yeah, into the. Yeah. Ground. And they're doing that right now with the movie. Fire. Yeah. yeah they're doing that with the movie where it's getting to the point where like you're not even doing the character justice at least with the comics some of them are really amazing if not some of the best comic book stories ever yeah. but with these movies you're not really getting a, a definitive batman on screen you're you're like mm -hmm. you, you had it for those five minutes in the warehouse and for those 30 seconds in suicide squad and for every five minutes and 30 seconds we're getting another six hours worth of this i i'm just gonna say i don't think we've ever gotten a 100 percent batman uh 100 correct batman depiction well that's a whole screen. different that's a whole different thing yeah, yeah. that's another kind of mask of the phantasm but, but, other than that Kevin yeah. Conway's on another level. <laughs> but uh you know but, with this movie it's just like i don't even know what to say anymore honestly they, yeah. <laughs> they, like, so almost filled in the right gaps like him taking out the pair of demons i could see him while they take on steppenwolf because he knows he's outmatched but even then like the way he did it like he had the right role but everything else just didn't fall properly you know yeah. like yeah it just yeah i agree i agree yeah um, there's, there's not much we, with batman are we ready brandon you want to jump into uh diana and arthur sure this might be i'm, one I'm of the just saying real quick too. i'm actually shocked how little batman changed between the two versions yeah i really am i'm surprised. Yeah. oh yeah so, um, uh, all right i'm just gonna say it if you would have told me back when i was like 20 that aquaman was gonna have the single-handedly best dc film and be like <laughs> The oh best, my god the best fucking member of the justice league practically i would have argued with, i would have died on that hill fighting against it i really would have is it weird that i like the whedon aquaman a little bit more than because it, it kind of fits in a way where he's a little yeah, yeah. yeah like, right like, like, only what? the scene that i was so mad that they cut was the one the where lasso. he said yes, yeah the lasso yeah, okay, 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 wait, 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 wait. Wait. so hang on only the lasso scene Everything else in this version is great. You just add in that little lasso scene. Yeah. Perfection. No, okay, no. So, okay, go. You first, you first, you first. Uh, it's just like, I am, what's the word? Flabbergasted? Is that the word I could use here? Yeah, like, yeah, sure, yeah no, sure, sure. Yeah. I am flabbergasted. Like, I, in my life of loving comic book characters, of appreciating DC Comics, never, ever, ever, ever fucking imagine that I would like a Aquaman movie more than a Batman or Superman movie. I seriously oh, yeah. never thought that. And I never thought in this fucking four hour, whatever you want to call it at this point, 4.3 aspect ratio film. <laughs> it's fucking, uh, like, it's like, go on, keep going, keep going. how is he the best member? How is he the one that like, well, he has because the arc from and like here's another thing i don't even people are gonna really hate me for this one i don't really care for game of thrones i've barely gotten past two episodes i tried reading and i got through half the book and i thought that was whatever i have no connection reading, listening to the book okay the audio book there. it's it's yeah, the audio book yeah, calm down that's, that's still reading that's, that's not still reading whatever it's anyway, still reading anyway, moving on, moving on. Aquaman, Aquaman. No, 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 let me explain the science of why audiobooks are reading since you want to go there <laughs> no you said <laughs> no, 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 no. no. we're getting yeah off track, no what i'm saying is i have no connection to jason momoa i have no you know what that, I mean? Like that's I, why he's so good. I like have that. no connection. I don't. I don't see him as that Game of Thrones villain. I don't see him as anything else. I don't see him as like being Aquaman as my favorite superhero. So that's why I enjoy the character. They just somehow click. Yes. I don't know what yes. it is. And in he this, in this movie, and passion. Yeah, in this movie, it feels like Jason Momoa is the only one having a good time. It, oh, like, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. like. In this cut, it's just more scenes kind of with it. And why does he keep taking clothes off and throwing them away? Where is he getting yeah. his clothes? Yes, but you know what? <laughs> he's so good in the movie. I'm just like, I don't care. He can no, do yeah, it. I get it. Like, That's part of the movie. Two scenes, like, dude. I two love scenes how... to take off your shirt. That's like, like one is great, but in that first scene where, or at least the first scene that Bruce is like talking to him, and he, they're like 
he walks off into the water, takes his sweater off. Like that was one of the few scenes, one of the, few, the scenes that I was like, oh, okay, they didn't need to draw it out for like them singing for him and stuff like that. But like at the same time, I love that that shows that the villagers there because he takes care of them when times are tough. They love him. Yeah. Like yeah. they don't yeah. just revere him as a God. They love him. Okay. Yeah. To the point where like, up? I I love that that one girl like goes and takes his sweater and just like takes a huge fucking whiff of it. Yeah. And, like, I was just about just, to like, say oh, that. <laughs> but like, yeah, like, I don't know what crazy magic they did with Aquaman's parts, but somehow they're for a character. I literally don't care for a character. I would have told you is one of the worst characters. What are you gonna say, Brandon? No, uh, this was oh, this could have waited after. But they don't have that painting in the room like they did in the weeding cut, do they? No, I don't no. think so. No, okay, so. cool. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, for a character I have no connection to, I was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I almost feel like, why don't they just let give 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 Aquaman a Zack Snyder if he's gonna keep making movies? Just let him have that character. <laughs> yeah. Don't make him in yeah. charge of anything else at this point. If if he makes it work, apparently. <laughs> you know I just thought that like Jason Momoa. Like this Arthur Curry had such interesting interactions with people throughout this movie. Like his eh. his back and forth with like Volko when uh like in that one scene where Volko's just like I'm a man of you- science myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit of a fish man myself. myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I, I just I liked that Volko seems like desperate. He's like, Hey, we need your help. Your people need your help. And he's like, not my people. You're, yeah. you're a petty, superstitious people. This was a I'm good not... setup to the Aquaman film. It yeah, it made way, it, so well it, <laughs> it made it all makes sense. It's not perfect, but it makes sense. I'm like, okay, yeah. I can get. You know, yeah. I, can, you, and you know I think it. he works too. Is he feels just like a more fun version of the version we got in Justice League? Yeah, yes. yeah. In the, in and that was a great where, iteration of Aquaman in that cartoon. Like one of my favorite scenes is w- the with him is uh, when they're exhuming Superman's body, and like turns out Diana and uh, Arthur were off on the side just watching the car. Yeah. Apparently. yeah, and they're talking about like their people's history, and I liked that that they fleshed that out that there is history between their people and why they haven't spoken to each other for yeah. so long, and why it's yeah. so significant that these two people are on a team together. And she even says, like, hey, when's the last time, like, our people have even spoken to each other? And he's like, they're not really my people either. I don't know much about them. And, like, I just, I liked that throughout the movie, he kind of gradually, like, initially he was like, I'm a loner. I don't need anyone's help. And then he kind of got past that. It, it's still he, a little awkward when he shows up to help them. He's just it is a like, little bit. Yeah. But, it, but like, like I, he's just standing there. <laughs> yeah for sure it's just like i liked that he throughout the movie he kept he kept having interactions where people were like you're gonna need to take up the responsibility that you have eventually and so he does because he's just like you know what you're all right i i can do something i should do something and i kind of liked that progression of, of his character but like it wasn't nearly as deep a backstory as like cyborg story or it felt it about the same as the flashes for me. It didn't yeah. need to be his story, but I just love how he shit talks Bruce for uh, dressing up as bad. He's like, so you dress up like a bat, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. thank you. Somebody finally well, points it out. Dude, that whole yeah. entire first scene with Bruce and him, like it just was so much better than the Whedon cut. And they did that a good whole, name drop too. He's like, so oh, so you're fun. the Aquaman. I was like, I yes. like that. I really like that. It subtle. Yes. Even the money thing, yeah. that money moment weighed way more sense. Dude, I hated yes. it in, in the Whedon cut where he's yeah. just like, I'll pay you 25 grand to be a hero for me. Oh, but in this, he's like, you know, five thousand dollars American to speak uh, to like get a meeting with this guy you want to talk to, and he's like, "I'll pay you twenty five thousand right now," because he, he's just like, "Money is no object. I need to talk to this person." Yeah, and it didn't feel like he was buying a hero. It felt like he just wanted to talk, and it didn't matter what cost what it cost him. Yeah, yeah. and dude, it's oh my god, I just I, I fucking love that man so much. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, yeah. it wasn't perfect, but it can worked. I, it was the best thing we got out of this movie. I can I say too? It 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 meant a lot to me because uh, Brandon knows this. Like we've talked about it before, because he's always like this such a stupid character and always hurts me inside. But uh, but you know, Batman's my favorite comic book character. But you know, he's not powered. My favorite superhero is Aquaman. I know I don't know if many people know that, but Aquaman is my favorite hero. 
and it's like his powers, everything about it. I, I love under like the aspect of the sea. I love everything about his powers, all that kind of stuff. And me getting like him in this movie and then his own solo movie on top of this, like you have no idea and how much be of good. like a, how much of a victory it's been for me. I'm just like running around, just like, dude. Oh. I- I'll give you that win. You know what? I'll yeah. you can have that W. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy for you, comrade. Yeah, I'll you know be what? Happy there with Again, you. I will come around and tell you, like, you know what? I was wrong apparently about this character in this universe, and I can live with that. that. Oh my God. I like how Brandon can't even say he was wrong. He was just like, I was wrong. Apparently, allegedly, I was wrong. Yeah, allegedly, about this it movie. takes this much. Uh, he never but, said. Like, for those that don't, know, he never says that. But like, you know, I got nothing else. Do you want to go into Wonder Woman? No. Yeah, let's get into let's get into I think Wonder, 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 Wonder Woman. Woman. I'm Did, predicting uh, that Wonder Woman is going to be the one that we're the we're the most split on, actually. Really? They they ruined the score of this movie by that the, with that new that was, intro that, theme song. This brings us into the music. I think the music's terrible. And really, yeah, music music's awful. Oh, really? Yeah, I oh, man. disagree and agree. Okay, so I think a lot of the music's great. I just specifically this the like oh ah! like oh yeah oh that, man i think it worked and then it didn't because it was used so many yes. times there you go. i think yep. if they just did it once it or was twice it's literally like, okay, every time she was on yeah. every time, every yeah, time she every did time. anything yeah. Did that. So, <laughs> yeah that was a little excessive. i think i i'm gonna uh, danny i think i did it better than you i'm just saying yeah, you probably did because i'm not a singer <laughs> I also still hate the opening scene with her where she, she's stopping just literal terrorists that are just like, we want to bring the world back to the dark ages with fear. And it's like, oh, but like, why? Oh, why? Wait, wait. <laughs> that part was better in this round because there was yes. like, when you first see it in the weeding cut, you're just like, what the fuck are these guys doing and why? Doing? Why, yeah. why is everything happening? Well, and like, this one you find out. She... However, she's trying to stop these people from blowing up a building and she and blows up she, a building she blows up the goddamn building <laughs> yeah she did like, way too fuck? she did way more damage to killing that one guy than they like did. the Dude, bomb did she yeah. was I, I, had rocks thrown at him I was she kinda obliterated la- I was, that guy in front of all those little kids and the first thing the little girl says I want to be like you it's like you just watched a murderer guy I was laughing so hard at that cause it was but like, like so I did then, love the line where she's like <laughs> Steppenwolf's like, she's mine. She's like, I yeah, belong to cool. no one. <laughs> but like, the thing that got me about this, and I know I complained about the slow motion a lot, and I still do. I feel like you could have took all the slow motion you were using in that movie and used it for this scene because it looked really goofy when she was like speeding around the room like she was oh, the Flash. It was so stupid. Like, it yeah. looked weird, and it just didn't yeah. look like it fitted the character. Maybe I'm wrong because I haven't... No, no. It, no, looks it was okay, like almost but it could look better. Yeah, it, it was almost on it, but you were just like, this is just too quick and just too much. Yeah, it's like, like you could have used you could have used slow motion for that instead of like I don't know the football game or something. Everything. You know, like, they, they like, like, um, you could have cut an hour out of this movie if you got rid of the slow mo. Yeah, and it's just like it would make more sense if everything was in slow motion and she was kind of moving at like the way Flash does at like normal speed. That would make more sense to me to show it that way. But I was just like, eh. And- it kind of reminded me of the Hobbit, the first Hobbit movie, where you see Gandalf at the door, and there's like a really weird moment because it's like the way it was shot. He goes like really fast paced, and you're just kind of like, oh, oh yeah, the way oh. they speed things. It's like uh, <laughs> yeah, old, it mo- it's like uh, the old James Bond movies where they f- they speed yeah. things up yeah. to like yeah. make yeah. it look it like it's intense. Like that a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So that's but, what uh, I uh, work that like first it scene, like when everything blows up, what would have made sense is if she would have stopped the terrorist and apprehended him and not killed him. And then she saves the people. And then the girl's like, I want to be like you. It's like, you stop people. You huh. did the opposite of what they did. They were trying to kill people. You didn't kill anyone. You saved us without having to kill people. That's why we admire you. And that's why we look up to you. That would have been like, okay, that's why everyone had, like, they're all just, wow. And d- don't get me amazing. wrong. I don't have a problem with Wonder Woman killing because she's a warrior. Yeah, it, I don't. Yeah, have a I don't. It's, no, it's yeah. very apparent that she There's kills like people. And it, yeah, you know. certain circumstances, like Brandon's saying here, I completely agree with that. Where she wouldn't, especially in front of a bunch, a group of kids, children. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, that, it makes that, sense. That like, weird. but this, it, yeah, this is over. It, like, like we said earlier, it makes sense. She cut off Steppenwolf's head. It just mm-hmm. made less sense that Superman didn't stop her. But it's you know, so, that's basically yeah. what it was. It just shows how, like, I guess everybody in the Snyder world is a psychopath. Yeah, and like the other thing with Wonder Woman. I'll say and this is my biggest problem that they did with the character they resorted her to just being the like storyteller exposition for the audience and, and like the mu- it's and just, the muscle until superman shows up they, i did kind of like that 
they give a reason why she knows the whole backstory because yeah. she like gets the arrow yeah. and it's like not only is the arrow like a warning but it's a key to a place that explains all this shit and i, yeah. I don't know i kind of liked the greek fresco it, it I, all I, I comes know. down to the execution it all comes down to the execution of it i think true yeah. Well, yeah. also, I loved how, like, okay, we didn't cut. We were really upset how she was treated and how, like, weak she was. But here, yeah. every fight, to the point where even Steppenwolf, every time he got to fight her, it was like a fight. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, yeah, she no. She got, she definitely yeah. showed how powerful she was. But they yeah. also used her as, like, the, the person that's like, tell us the story, Diana. You know, this it's is, just like. Well, it's just sense, like the Flash. It's like two steps forward, two, two steps back. Character. In wow. sense, I can kind of understand that. She's like, they're going with that mythological Greek aspect yeah. and her being that old, of course she's going to be the storyteller. I do love and that. The like, history it knower, and she sense. does the archaeology stuff. Even in Wonder Woman 1984, her whole career is built about knowing yeah. history, knowing yeah, background. <laughs> well, no, no, but like her occupation, you know what I mean? Like her whole thing. Yeah, been, like, I get that. I do love when Steppenwolf was fighting her and he's he realizes like why he's having such a hard time fighting her. He's like, you have the blood of the old gods in you. Yeah. 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 I'm just saying, I just feel like there was a lot of her doing exposition. It's just her like explaining everything. Everything. Yeah, everything is just like, kind of like yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, we get it. You can kind of, you well, know, you can you, tell us these things, but you not know all what the I time. I noticed that the most is that when she was giving the flashback scene of the first big battle um, with Darkseid, is like the Atlanteans before they went into the water, and the Amazonians before they went to hide in the It's like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I was like shocked. Fort- her mom is also like they're all like thousands of years old. Yeah, dude, I lo- I, I do love that they have um her aunt Auntie up there because she's still alive at that point. Yeah, so they yeah. brought the actress back. Yeah, those, those but like of- besides that, I mean, I feel like it's still very jarring to watch Wonder Woman and then watch this. Yeah, you know, like it's really I, 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 I sad better- realizing that like, I, I Wonder just Woman feel- 84 came out after I just uh. I just feel like they still showed how underpowered uh, same thing with Aquaman but they definitely show they made Wonder Woman seem a lot underpowered than she's supposed to be yeah. that's how I take it you know but- she's supposed to be again powerful and one of the strongest Brandon we just spent like five million months explaining death metal and she's like the most powerful That's being true. in You're the right. fucking multi omniverse. Right. Literally, the most powerful person. And this is supposed and most, to be connected to the multiverse. Like, like again, I, I'm not. I'm trying to say like the scale of her power is like omniverse status. We I see what literally, you, mean. you know, I see she that. is powerful, and she is well into her career as Wonder Woman at this point. She's been Wonder Woman for a while. And I it's think just like this is another thing that dates back to like we got so little in the weeding cut. Just seeing how different it was was like amazing and overwhelming. But I, I, I def that thing that's where my head is with Wonder Woman. Just like that shock of how much better she was than the weeding cut. But it could, it should have been like it was here, and it should have been through the roof. And we just yeah, the, the ceiling, way exactly you know? the way she was, she definitely was given more screen time here, but. The way Superman just tossed her around and, you know, the she was able to go up against Steppenwolf. But in my eyes, maybe I'm wrong. Wonder Woman should be like a little bit more on par with Steppenwolf, not struggling I, yeah. as much. So yeah. I think what she should have kicked the shit out of Superman, honestly. So one thing that confused me a little bit, and I think maybe they did this on purpose to show you like how he, like defensive uh steppenwolf's armor is or like how good it is at like blocking damage i don't know her sword cut through doomsday's arm like butter and she couldn't scratch uh dark side or steppenwolf in this so i was just like were they are they saying that doomsday was like nothing compared to this guy or are they just forgetting that she could just cut through like kryptonian monsters like nothing i guess like i mean she could probably cut through she could have probably if steppenwolf didn't have that armor early on i'm pretty sure she probably could have killed him just with the power she had oh uh, for it. sure because like as soon as uh the only reason why aquaman was able to spear him in the back was because uh superman lasered off like the his armor on yeah. like, one shoulder yeah, so it was really like it wasn't even his sheer brutal power. It was straight up like the technology that they had against that of Earth. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know Otherwise, what they really needed with this? Um, I, and honestly, the Amazonian thing was perfection to me. Like that dude, entire I fucking love perfection. That. So good. But you had a bit missing, of their lasers too. <laughs> oh my god. 
We needed the purple lasers. That's what we needed. God, we needed anyway, were you seriously going to go back to that, Brandon? Or did you please, just bring that please, up? Just we, to... we, we are like, we are over three hours right now. Could we please? <laughs> okay. Um, so we went over all the characters, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, all the all ones right. that matter. Can, can I just say this? I want to, I don't know if maybe we could just segue it into to, to this though, but you know, there's other four hour epic movies. You know, the four hour epic movie is not a thing that we see ever anymore. And it's very, very rare. It's very Everyone's rare. Shorter attention you know, spins. and I wish, and I'm the fact that this is a four hour epic movie that we got after all these masterpieces. Cause like you look at movies like Ben Hur, the original one with Charlton Heston, that's one of the greatest movies ever made. And it is an epic. It is three hours and 45 minutes. It has an intermission and everything. You look at gone with the wind. That's another like four hour epic movie. Those movies are air tight. Return of the fucking king. And okay. Return of the king. And but Return of the king. Those movies are airtight to get you through to get you through them and everything. If you're gonna do a four hour movie, it's got to be airtight, and you got you are not gonna waste any time in that movie. But this wasn't meant to be viewed as a film like this. This was a vision and experience. It wasn't meant to be like. Then oh, he should. Then he should. Can- Brandon, I'm sorry, but then he shouldn't be making movies. Well, no, that, that's the whole thing with this cut. And that's where I said right. in the very beginning, this wasn't, this was like an unedited, we got every yeah. scene that we wanted to have yeah. in the script. This is not like a filtered out, like we've gone through studio and productions. This is raw like material. And that's why I, I can't even agree with that because this is not in that same category because it shouldn't be a four hour film. The uh, Those Ben-Hur and all that, those were meant to be four hour films. This wasn't. And mm. you could even tell by all the slap in add on stuff like and I mean, what it, it doesn't even matter. Like this wasn't meant to be a four hour film. This wasn't even thought to be uh, this is it. This is the definitive, you know, final version that we wanted to show the audiences because it wasn't. This was like, all right, well, I had my cut and my cut was going to be something like this before it went through all the filters. I mean, I go ahead, Brandon. I mean, it's still a movie. Yeah, I mean, like well, I, a I'm, movie I've, can be whatever. Like it's like yeah, it, a comic. It, it's an experimental. I thing. I get what you're saying. It's him trying to show his project, right? Like, and this is the thing. It it, it is his his. I know we've been joking about it, but it's his vision, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's what he wanted. It's how he wanted to portray his story. The thing is, it's still a film that we pay money to watch to a so, streaming service though that's why it never streaming got into the, well that's why it doesn't go to theaters yeah but it's, it's still presented to that it's still in the medium of a film that's it, it would have gotten a theatrical release if there wasn't covid i guarantee another it's going to be uh, yeah, yeah they want to release uh yeah it's it, gonna be imax in they want to make money they want to make yeah. money oh. they want to make money it's gonna happen and no matter how we look at it, I'm sorry, Brandon, I get what you're saying. I really do. And I understand and it makes sense. But at the end of the day, it is still in the format of a film. Yeah. You know, it's that's just the, the way I see it. It's still a movie we we watch and it's going to be a story told in the same way movies tell stories. And I think we still have to hold it accountable as a film, you know, regardless if you know however you want to look at it it is still in that format and i still think it is subject to being critiqued as a film and, and but I, why, oh wait go for it danny no i just want to say too is that you know where, where the weed and cut felt like a movie that was chopped down way too short this feels like a movie with all the scenes in it that should have been left on the cutting room floor you know, there's a balance between that. And yeah, like I, I will say this, it doesn't feel like it was meant to be a four hour epic, but then Snyder shouldn't have marketed it as that. And they shouldn't have pushed it as that, as that this is what it's going to be a four hour epic movie of my vision and everything. Like they definitely pushed it as a four hour epic. I don't think they even mentioned the word epic though. If we get well, that, they, like, they don't really say epic, but like a four, if you're going to say four hour movie that automatically qualifies as an epic. Well, it's one of those things. That's why I go back to the whole, this is an experiment. This was something that was not even supposed to happen. This is something that was kind of created because Snyder pushed for this and the fans pushed for this and there was a bunch of backup for it. This is something that like, I can't even consider it a film. This was something that we're, you know, 
oh, I'm not, you're going to hate the way I phrase this, but we're lucky this even got made, you know? Yeah. This is not something that was going to exist due to some of these restrictions and due to the format of it. And even if, yeah. like, let's say in a world where his daughter didn't pass away and he got to finish the movie, I can guarantee you the final product, if no Joss Whedon was involved in this and he got to do it, it probably would not have even been as close to this long. Like there would have been a full on edit and you would have seen Two like, and a half, so much. Three hours maybe. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And but then instead... we could critique it as a film. Then we could yeah. critique it as like uh, the movie format. But it's like, do you critique from hell? Because that's a very oversized, bizarre comic book. Do you still critique it as a comic book? It's like, yeah, it's like super long. It's expanded. You have all these linear notes and all these references and all these data sheets inside of it. That's a totally different way to do a comic book, but we still critique it as such. Like it's an experiment. And that's, this wasn't meant to be a, sent to the Academy Awards and to be nominated for stuff. This is just pure cutting room raw stuff. And we can tell because if so, then the graphics at the very end would have been better. Um, the graphics throughout the last hour would have been improved. Like you wouldn't even is, have seen that scene at the end either. Yeah, yeah. It, would, it wouldn't have been there. So I can't, I can't critique it or even consider it as like something like that. This is kind of more of a, maybe even like a documentary in a sense, and in, in the sense of like, you know, when they did the Death of Superman Lives and like the Fantastic Four movie that never got finished creating. This is kind of along those lines of like the 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 like a pilot practically that never got aired for justice league you know i I can't consider it as a film because it's not the intention of it and they may market it and they may want to get all the money they want off of it but all in all reality it's not and this isn't the final product anyone would have gotten yeah i mean i just kind of took it as a director's cut basically it's because yeah, you know, I, I took it as what they were trying to push it as. And I was just like, if this is what you're going to push it as, this is what I'm going to critique it as. And I understand completely what Brandon's saying. But at the end of the day, but I'm just like, I, I could see what you mean for sure. I know I, yeah. I, I'm, very, I'm pushing this a whole lot. I, and I never and, pushed no, but I, know, I, I like but, uh, having this conversation, this kind of. And more... you know what, Brandon, I really want I, we practically agree on a lot of stuff and disagree. And I do really want to agree with you. You're the same the person, is, pretty much. The thing is, I would agree with you more if it was like a documentary s kind of thing where he had Zack Snyder sitting down and discussing the film as it's playing or something, or hit like critiquing alongside of it or you know analyzing it. I'm sure there's gonna so, be an edition like that. You know what I mean? Or like even a com- <laughs> or like a, a commentary. A commentary. I could see it being called that if it was like something just like, like that. we just like Apollo City Comics. With yeah, you know, <laughs> every single week the unscripted uh, comic book commentary show. But like on YouTube with the new channel that going uh, going on right now. <laughs> Do you see uh, what I'm getting at though? <laughs> no, I know. I, I totally yeah. know what you mean. I totally yeah, know what you mean. That, I, I'm I, pushing my my thing way more than I typically yeah, do. Yeah, and again, but, I I hate to really disagree with you, but man, it's still presented as a film on a streaming service. You know, it's not presented as a documentary or any sort of other type of film. It visionary is experimental. Yeah, it's not yeah, considered yeah, any yeah, version yeah. of like experimental filming. It's experienced as a director's cut. It's just got his name on it. It's the Zack Snyder director's cut, which is still, in my eyes, a film. Yeah. Yes. No, there you're right. Totally right. You're you're absolutely right on that. And at the end of the day, I know we're not done, but I I just wanted to critique it as a film. We're getting there. Yeah. Yeah, we're 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 getting right. there. I, so, I'm kind of so, running out of stuff to say, honestly. All right. So I mean, I don't think honestly at this point, because we've gone that deep into the characters and all their portions, like there's not really anything to say specifically of the parts themselves, then I would you all agree with that? Yeah, I think we yeah, covered it. I think we really yeah. actually Delve, the nightmare delve scene, deep into these movies. Mo- yeah, even Nightmare. Movie. Yeah. So mm. my question here to end it off here, and I know I, I can kind of have a preconceived notion how it's going to go for everyone's answers, but, you know, there's been talks and all these rumors of all these different ones. Like, I'm not really, we're not going to go into depth on any of these. Like, there was talk at first, like, oh, Zack Snyder's going to do a killing joke movie with Leto and Ben Affleck. Then there was talk of him doing Justice League 2 and 3. And then there's talk of him doing Wonder Woman 3 and all this weird stuff. But in the sense of like, you know, this is meant to be a trilogy and we already know kind of like that weird what if, which I don't agree with the whole like Lois, Batman, Bruce affair shit, stupid. But like, uh, if they gave him, if they said, hey, come back and do a Justice League two and three, would you want him to do it? Or if he did do it, what would your kind of like 
what are your catches for it? What are your, what are the caveats for that in that case for it? If you did, because I, I, I'm at that point, like I said before, I want to see a Batman movie, but I want to see it done by Ben Affleck or someone else. I want to see a Superman movie, but I want to see it done by someone else. All these individual movies, I kind of want to see them be fleshed out with those people. In Patty Jenkinson's case, she just doesn't need any more yes men. That's like hers. Uh, more reigns there. But like for this, how do you all feel about that? And even if it was, it's like, you know, whether we want it or not, and it did happen. How, what would you want? Not the whole film itself, not how it's going to be, but in terms of control and like who does what and things like that, how would you feel? Here we go with restore the Snyder verse. <laughs> And that the bell has, I'm not going to, I'm not even fucking like the bell's been rung and the hashtag is probably already started. I haven't done it. Dude, it, it was trending last night when I checked. It's, oh, it's, so, trending. Yeah. it's still hard. trending. So, yeah. Uh, who would like to jump first in on this and just kind of, it doesn't have to be long. It, we, we don't need this to be long. Either. Um, I will. Oh, wait. Just maybe I'm not it. understanding the question specifically, but like I, I already texted you like right after I finished the movie that like, holy fuck, I want a cyborg movie. Because I, I just like I enjoyed Ray Fisher so much in this movie that like oh yeah I, I and I like the setup for this character so much that like they could at least for a cyborg movie I think they could do a cyborg movie I would like to see a Batman solo movie but I don't think we're gonna get that uh, and people are probably gonna hate me for this but I would like to see them do the rest of the Snyderverse trilogy for the Justice League <sighs> movies and just put it on HBO Max. Don't bother doing a theatrical uh, release or anything, but like maybe do it as like an HBO thing. I don't know. I really liked you, James. I seriously, <laughs> I genuinely liked you as a person. It's, it's not one of those things where like I need to see it, but I'm just like, I'm curious. Like I, I enjoyed this movie more, way more than I was expecting to. Would I enjoy the rest of this trilogy? Maybe not, but like, I, the nightmare scene had enough interesting hooks for me that I was like, I don't know. I might be interested in seeing this someday, maybe. All right. Since we got Brandon interrupting you a little bit there, Sorry. Brandon, I want to I know then for you, do you, it's just yes or no for it. And then if it was going to happen, just what's your little caveat? So it would be the things you would want as like precautions, I guess you could say. If for, I, for him to move forward? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want it. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, let's, let's make it sure. <laughs> like, you know, I told you. My, I guess my caveat would be, if he did move forward, and he has to be the one in charge of everything and has to have this sort of vision. Just start over, just as in this movie happened. Um, don't connect to anything and just tell a completely different story. If you're, if he has to, if there absolutely needs to be some version of those films to come out just please don't give us that story you, you have i think i agree with you there like, like i if they were gonna keep going with snyder then like yeah probably just like start just from start over again. if you want to if you want to lead if, if you want to lead into the whole nightmare thing nightmare with a k um <laughs> if you want to lead into the duster coat batman and all that then don't show me any any of this other stuff just, just get over do that. it just yeah do that. you know what just do that just give me the injustice story just go straight into it dark side came to the fucking world and superman is working for him or whatever just go to that just make that your trilogy you know what i will give him that if they, he absolutely needs to like tell just the story he obviously wants do to something instead of just yeah. teasing everything like just Actually, tell Danny, that. that made that made perfect sense yeah, yeah. like do that yeah get past all this modern day stuff just go into the nightmare thing just go straight forward you obviously want to that's your big epic thing you're hinting at apparently just do it get it over with if you absolutely need to make those movies don't give me any of this other stuff don't show me any terrible chemistry between lois lane and superman and constantly killing them off and resurrecting them and all. just stop just do your nightmare shit and move on danny since you also commented there i'd love to okay if you want to jump in there i uh... Like I said, with this movie, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed in it. And it's just, I don't even know anymore. It's just, I don't, <laughs> I don't really want to see. I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, comrade. I really don't have a yes or no answer for you on this. Is this because I don't even know if I ever want to see a DC movie again. Like oh as I, at this point, I'm just like, 
the MCU, it is far from perfect. I got my problems with it and everything, but at the end of the day, if that's if it's between that and what DC's keeps giving us, that's it. I'll just go watch Marvel, even though I'm a DC guy. I'm not a Marvel guy. <laughs> that's and, rough. I'm sorry. And it's just, you know, Snyder, I, he has gotten so many chances to prove that he could do this. And he has blown it every single time. And this was his big chance. He had every he had the whole world backing him up and i'm happy that the snyder fans got it released i'm happy that he got to finish his vision you know that was cute that he direct at the end when he said for autumn and everything he said that's really nice good for him he got his vision done and everything i hope all you guys you know enjoyed it the snyder fans and everything but don't you dare come at me and try to tell me that he knew what he was doing and that he made he turned out a good project he didn't there's plenty of things that i like that suck that i will admit that suck but i still like them you know, so I, I don't, I'm kind of done with DC after this. I don't, even the Matt Reeves Batman movie, I'm just like, I, I don't even have any hype for that anymore. I just, you know, he did that whole thing where he mapped out his whole universe with Jim Lee and they spent the day. So he, he was in creative control of all this. He had his vision, you know, maybe go do a comic book with Jim Lee. It already got confirmed that it might happen through a comic book sequel. Yeah, go if do there's that. enough fan support, go do that and everything. I don't want to see his vision. I don't even really want to see them reboot it and start over. I just kind of am. They really, I don't think that Warner Brothers and I don't think people in general really realize how much they drop the ball for DC fans and these characters that are. This is a this is the United States has given the world so much shit. This is one of the few good things the United States has given the world that is good is superheroes, comic books. And they drop the ball so hard on these characters. I, I have just, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, I know that was long winded. I know it was supposed to be yesterday. I just, I don't even know what to say anymore. I really I don't. Hey man, you're speaking you know? from your heart. I get it. Yeah. Get it. Yeah. All right, Brandon, your turn. I always said that this should have just been a comic. <laughs> <laughs> Where uh, you can watch us review it on a Paul City Comics. <laughs> yeah, like I, you know, the thing is, is that, okay, I understand that if this was the movie that came out in 2017, rather than Josh Whedon's, the responses and everything would have been totally different, you know? um we still wouldn't have been super crazy about it but we would have really enjoyed it more than what we got and that's the why this is so monumental is because this is different from what we got the first time this is what we were supposed to get you know it's like when i am even thinking now allegory i'm so tired um it's like <laughs> if you get bad ice cream and then they're just like oh no this was the flavor you want or you know okay me and brand just i'm gonna rant um go for it i feel go. no no i was gonna do a stupid thing um i feel like what Brandon said and what Danny said were a hundred percent right. Like, why did we get this? You obviously wanted this nightmare thing so fucking bad. Why didn't they make it a comic, an animated movie, a short? Why didn't we just get this as a film? Why did we have to have all of this just to get to that? When it's like, look at you, this was all so bad. You blew it. You didn't even get to the prize. You didn't even get to do the main thing you want because everything B man of steel wasn't that great. BVS wasn't good. Justice League was all right. That doesn't mean you're going to get to the final like round of whatever you're doing. And I definitely would not want the sequel trilogies. I, I do not want Bruce boning Lois and cheating on Superman and having a kid. And then that kid doesn't have power. So he's Batman. So he's Superman. No, no, yeah, no. I don't that want any of that. Really fun. That's really yeah. fun. Uh, the more I hear these follow-up ideas, I'm like, the more and more he drifts from these characters. And I just can't. I, I I think it's cool. I'm glad I got to see this film because he erases the weeding cut. You know what I mean? That's what I really wanted and what I was chasing after. Just a better film and to prove it was a better film than the weeding cut, which it was. I will stand by that 100%. I'm, 100%. I'm surprisingly not mad that I watched it. I'll say that. Yeah, you know. And you know, that's the thing too. Yeah, sorry. It's just like, I wasn't angry after. I was just like, like I said, like I kept telling you guys, I was like, Ugh. you know. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, but also yeah. I... And that's where I agree with Brandon, 100%. You know what I mean? Like, this should have been a comic. This should have been anything. Just do your fucking nightmare thing. I would have loved just to see your nightmare scenario. And I would have been content and just stop. But at this point, 
I have not read a DC book since we finished Metal at the beginning of January. And watching all this, all this stuff, I don't do anything DC. I've been doing Marvel and indie and everything, and I can't go. I'm hearing cool stuff about Infinite Frontier and all this cool stuff, and I'm like, that sounds great, but I can't even pick up a DC book. I'm so fried out, and they've misrepresented these characters so badly in every way possible. They redeemed Aquaman. Wonder Woman's all right, but still not like the compared to the way she is in the comics. It's not. It's just a good live or her movie or her. Well, no, the the movie even even compared to the comics, they didn't like fully nail her properly. Mm. Uh, Cyborg's probably the best thing that came out of all of this when you look at it. So I, I I don't I don't want any more. I think it's cool we got to complete it, and that's why at the beginning of this I said finish your story. And you know what he if the if nightmare stuff was so important, he would have finished telling that instead of all this other crap. But obviously it wasn't because it's not very thought or planned out. So that's my rant. Gotcha. Well, my turn. Um, and that's the show. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Yes. Yes. Right. You've been great, guys. Great. You know, great God, talking damn. to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I almost want to be like, yo, cue that Lex Luthor music. <laughs> you know what? Just, if you didn't have to pay so, the copyrights, I'd say edit it in. Right? <laughs> uh, but all right. So do I think... Zack Snyder should do like a Justice League two and three. It's a it's it's honestly it's I'm not even gonna joke. It's it's actually a really really hard decision for me. I'm not even joking. Like it's like okay, if you I, I see two circumstances for this. One, if you said he has full control and everything he gets to do will happen in this, then I would actually say no. I don't want a Justice League. Two and Stop. Three. <laughs> but that's also Stop. Lo- the lowest so fast, stuff y'all. is actually. But I would take him doing two more under the specifics of there is oversight. There isn't like the weird DC exec oversight that fucked it up in the first place. Like not the same dudes that said, give us like 10 years of movies in like two. Like I don't want them. I don't want their control. I want him to be working with the people that have been fleshing out these characters now on their own. All those directors, all those creators, all those writers that have been working on Aquaman solo, Wonder Woman solo, Shazam solo, all these ones that have been doing all of this, he has to take their styles and incorporate that and not do his full on takes of these characters. So you get someone to direct a Superman movie and write a Superman movie that's man of steel too and it's our the 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 henry cavill we want to see and then he goes hey zach you want to use this character you have to do it my way just give us the grant morrison movie trilogy like that's what we all want you know that's yeah it's the best brandon and i talked about this ever (laughs) brandon and i talked about this where grant morrison would be a perfect don't put chris terry on it don't put get david goyer in it have grant morrison work with Snyder on this and let him be like, oh, you want, you want to get some fourth world and multiverse? Hey, well, I got a story for you, buddy. And yeah. Then, like, no, that's what I want. And that's what I'd want to see. Yeah, that's what Marvel and does. They have the comic people exactly. involved in their movies. There's oh. there. And it's that whole thing. It, it's when you come, when it comes down to it, it's the whole thing we talked about when we first started the show, when I first brought this up to you guys, the DCU is a mess. And there's so much all over the place where you don't even know where it is at this point. And they are lacking that Kevin Feige that Marvel has. They're lacking a, a, a person that has that whole web. He's not the one in there on the dirt, putting his hands in everything, but he's up there going, hey, I'm making sure this garden is growing overall. I'm not going after each individual plant, but I'm watching it. And that is what we need for this. And that is what we need to steer it in the right direction. Yes, at least... You know, I've said it before, we're going on like a, a month or so hiatus. It'll be like late April at the earliest we're coming back with Aquaman. And, you know, at the same time, we're going to come back, honestly, with pretty much three good movies. And I feel like we're going to be pretty, pretty positive for the most part. And yeah. that shows hope yeah. because those movies are going in a good direction. And they're kind of, they're still kind of figuring shit out and falling around everywhere. But at the same time, we're kind of seeing some we're, we're seeing some promise happen we're seeing some improvements and it's showing hope for this and we don't know where it's going to go we don't know what's going to happen next because right now it's very much everything's very splintered there's there's nothing kind of overarching at this moment splinter and 
we're potentially Sorry. we're potentially getting it first maybe with that flash movie which honestly there's going to be a lot there's going to be a lot riding on the flash movie because that's going to honestly tell us where the dcu is going to go and that's going to tell us what we're going to look forward to after and we're going to do an episode on that and the other movies coming out in the next two years later on after we get through the actual movies themselves that have already come out but it's it's just something to think about and that is my spiel there i know i went a little bit long there but i've honestly wanted to say this for a very long time and especially after watching this movie too it just put a lot more into it because you know i I appreciate all of you guys coming onto this and joining me on this because you know i've told you before like i've been wanting to do this show or something like this i've had this project in my mind for multiple years now and it's like it's my own vision coming to fruition but like it it's this has been my baby yeah, for any of you Third Planet listeners who don't know, we've reviewed every single um, DCEU film on Comron's podcast, uh, Sutro Side Talk. So go check that out for all of our thoughts on the previous yeah, DC and, movies. You know, I, I think I also should say, as much as I get annoyed with these films and infuriated with your pure passion to see through and love these movies still, <laughs> at the end of the day, as angry as I'll get and complain and, you know, tell everybody how much I complain. I do like that. We could sit down and try to at our very best attempt a conversation on these. Yes. You know, guys, all in all, we're not going to have to do this again. (laughs) Yeah. 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 (laughs) The closest thing, the closest thing we do for this is maybe, you know, quickly going through some of the MCU movies, but that wouldn't be nearly as painful, I think. But I mean, I think we're going to get to that point at some point. We're going to, we're going to figure out what we're doing after the DC stuff, but that's let's for now. It's like, let's get through the DC stuff and then we'll see where we go from there. I think, you know, cause me, Brandon and Brandon are, (laughs) <laughs> when you say it like hey, that. brandon and brandon are you know we're we're aspiring writers we want to make writing our career and i think really dissecting these movies it it helped us you know notice what we shouldn't do yeah. and what we should do with movies and i think it you know it helped us not only kind of flex our knowledge but also you know kind of i think help us grow a little bit in that way yeah, you know, definitely. And, of course. Yeah. And that's, that's why we come back every yeah. week. Yeah, that's something I really and, appreciated about this. This ironically, this movie did bring us all together. So yeah, yeah. there's that. I know it we, sounds corny. Are. I know it sounds cheesy. And Zack Snyder said that that was the whole theme and point of the movie was to oh, bring everybody God. together. It works. So, We've been talking about it. this for oh almost my, as long as the movie itself. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. Zack Snyder. Cut. Zack Snyder. Like he, it, he's it, that deep seated in our lives. It's the Snyder cut episode, man. Danny, you were, you were part of his vision. Yeah. <laughs> we contributed four uh, hours. I'll, uh, I'll you know, that. I've spent a whole shift at work watching this movie and discussing it. <laughs> and yeah. I think that should show our dedication because I literally make no money off this. None of us do. This is our days off. (laughs) Yeah, this is a day that I could be spending with my family or doing other stuff. But you know (laughs) what? I am. I. But you know what? I am. (laughs) I'm happy that I did. I enjoyed this four-hour-long conversation with you guys, and you know, it's um, it's sad that it kind of went the way it did. You know, it's really sad. But that's that's the thing. That's why we're something out of it. No, you're not I, just trying to rip on it. It's just no. we're upset with the outcome. We don't I love thing. these characters, you know? Yeah, this it's like I, my life. I, I really wanted to like this fucking movie. I yeah, genuinely we're, did. We're all big DC people. Like the, DC Everything. is our thing. Yeah, except James. He, he really loves 90s Spider-Man. He just kind of lives uh, in a symbiote. I, I lean <laughs> a little bit more Marvel, I but I still enjoy but, you know, DC characters. I, you know, that's the thing too. These characters, everything comic book related, they encompass my life. You know, I want to yeah. ground my education and career off of this stuff. And it's you just like... Snyder could pull off doing a Spawn film? No. The fuck is wrong with you, dude? Get no. out of here! Get stop! Stop, out Brandon. Of here. We were I'm having of you. Brandon. We were you. having a nice moment, and you just came in and, and just shit on it. I'm never doing shit. any. I'm never doing any spawn shit with you ever again. <laughs> I feel like it's like we were all sitting on a train track, and Brandon was the train that just came and ran us all over. It was it like really a it was like a weird hate. like Thomas the Tank Engine train though. That's the worst <laughs> part. You just had that fucking smile and shit. Yeah. Can I say this too? You know, I mentioned this in in one of our previous episodes that 
the DC's more thanks to those cartoons that we grew up with are way more mainstream than on the Marvel characters were. So people know how these are supposed to be a lot more. And you know, I have an outline just sitting there waiting for yeah. yeah. And I I I talked to my sister this morning. She you know she's she's a zoomer. She's not really into con. She likes the characters. She grew up on all those cartoons because I watched them. And she doesn't really know a whole lot about the lore, but she knows how these characters are supposed to be. And she said, well, how is the movie? And I explained to her that Martian Manhunter and a character that not a lot of people know, but she knows it from that Justice League cartoon shows up in two scenes in the Justice League movie and he never fights at all with the Justice League. And she goes, that sounds so stupid. So it's just, people know these characters and people love them they were a big part of a lot of people's childhoods. And I think that they just, they should have been handled with more care. Yeah. It, at the end of the day, it's one of those things that like one of my dreams is to just have a chance to write a single Batman issue, not even a defining run to just have a chance to use that character in my own creative work is literally a lifelong dream. And when I see this, I'm like, okay, I feel like I might actually have a chance maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know Batman better than Zack Snyder. I, I think that right. we came up Let's with see. better fan fiction. You know, we we'll, we'll just go like, well, they could have done this. They could have done that. They could have done this. I know hindsight's 2020, but, you know, if you guys are getting paid millions of dollars to make movies and this is your job, do a better job. Yeah. So, with that said, that has been. The Cut of Steel, episode six, and also the, I think you said episode four of the third planet. Whatever. Th- this is just third planet's <laughs> review of the Snyder Cut. Okay. End of uh, phase one. And you know what? Thank you for having this crossover. Thank you for having me on all these episodes, Conrad. I know that we butted heads a lot and everything, and that sometimes I came off as kind of a D-bag. Guys, um, think about how peaceful our Discord conversations are going to be. <laughs> I know, yeah, right? No more arguing. Dude, but I, like, I mean, it, I mean, it, Conrad, though, thank you for having me on all your your episodes. Hey, man, thanks for being here, and I'm, ha- yeah. I'm honestly happy we started working together. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. a lot of fun with all these episodes too. Yeah. You know, maybe this is our origin story I, to our Justice League. Damn, that'd be cool, dude. Yeah. I want to be Aqua, uh, Aqua Batman. All right, is that's <laughs> I'm gonna Bat- do both. I want to be both. Don't say Aquabat, please. I don't want to do that. I don't know. I'm an ignorant hick who grew up on a farm, so I'll probably get Superman. <laughs> oh, real quick. Know. I did find it interesting that Actually, they no, shoehorned in the Adam real quick. Be awesome. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah, oh yeah, my God. Adam, we we forgot oh, about the Adam. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, how they, they dropped that at the end of the movie. He's he's like, who are you? And he had to look it up. I was like, Dr. Cho. Oh, I yeah. I, 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 what was the point of them not using Ray Palmer? Uh, yeah, you got uh, diverse, my, diversity. diversity. Oh, my, yeah. my girlfriend was like, because <laughs> yeah. uh, when they said that, I was like, oh, okay, they did that. And my girlfriend's like, who's that? And I'm like, that's the Adam. And she goes, but because, you know, she likes a lot of the CW stuff and all that. She's like, oh. isn't Ray Palmer the Adam? And I'm like, yeah, but he's like the second or third Adam. So <laughs> yeah. you could just make Ray Palmer Asian. I'd be okay with that. No, that's, 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 can we just keep the, the characters? The characters? I don't yeah, know. yeah, they already got a name. In the in the comics, I mean, he is the third Adam, though. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I was telling Kato, I was like, he's like the second or third somewhere along the. Why yeah. was he in the movie? He's an injustice. I, I was like, he's not <laughs> the, the nuclear Adam. He's the shrinky guy Adam. There's yeah. Two. So yeah, yeah, and uh, I we usually just we we used to do this a lot more in Future Side Talk, but I started I brought it back, and I, I want to do it for this one too. Uh, attach this show if you look at the show notes there will be a link uh if you want to donate you can uh to a suicide prevention uh foundation that it's the same one that all of the uh release of snyder cut fans did uh during this whole thing and raised i think it's now over five hundred thousand dollars uh for suicide prevention so that link will be there there'll be a couple different links for it uh, i'll have in there but you can click on that if you want to send someone money there you go that's where you can send something uh, or you could do it and potentially get like a little Justice League swag out of it too at the same time. But either way, the the money will go to a good cause. Uh, with that said, Danny, where can people find you uh, for the people listening to the Cut of Steel? Real quick, guys, anybody catch uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon? <laughs> Danny, <laughs> Danny. Yeah. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh... Okay. Um, you can find me at www.dannybenson.com that has links to all my social media on there as well as my personal blog and portfolio. 
Uh, you could also check out my new site that I run with uh, Brandon and my other friend, Ryan. That is www.thirdplanet.news. That also has links to our YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, yeah, Facebook if you're a boomer and all that on there that you can find that. So, uh, yeah, we have some other cool content coming up, especially for Kong versus Godzilla. So, And be sure to listen to Third Planet uh, podcast. You can find that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and uh, Google Podcasts. All right. Blocks caught us slash Moncador. Where can people find you guys? <laughs> Both of us are just like, ah. we, sh- we should have had a rhythm going. Uh, go know. ahead, Brandon. Uh, check us out on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, uh, on any social media. Uh, you will get to see our collections, uh, some videos, live videos, unboxings. Um, check us out on our YouTube channel. We are under Apollo City Comics now, and we're having uh, new episodes uploaded weekly and classic uploads, uh, classic episodes uploaded as well. Uh, it's an unscripted. Co- uh, what do we? What do we do? Unscripted comic book conversation <laughs> show slash uh-huh. critique breakdown yeah. uh, comparison it's, it's cool everything stuff. everything comic book related. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. I was. <laughs> Are we still on the David Frankenbeans channel? No, no, it's done. That's done. Is that well? It's there's done. no videos on there from you. Oh, everything's getting taken off. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So yeah, definitely check out the new YouTube channel. We are uh, trying to get more involved with videos. I want to keep. I want to emphasize on that that we're trying to get a lot more stuff going with like video interaction and just kind of more audible and you know visual aspect to it all. Yes, sir. Because it's a video. Okay, sorry, James. Where can people find you? <laughs> Uh, my screen name on pretty much everything, including Twitter, is at InvaderJim124. And other than doing this show, I also am a co-host for Sutra Side Talk with you, Kamran. Awesome. And you can find me, Kamran, at GoGoComzilla on Twitter. And you can also find the show Jims and I do, Sutra Side Talk, on the same channel uh, that Could Have Seal is on, Sutra Side Talk, where we talk about games, movies, and TV shows weekly. Uh, I also got a show I do with... Uh, Brandon Blockstorf there. Yeah. Your side watch every other week. We talk about a specific film and each month has its own theme. Yeah. Uh, we're in March right now still. So it's Miyazaki. Yeah. Film. And <laughs> April is going to be a uh, Ralph Bakshi. So some yeah. animation there. And, <laughs> and then last show is uh, up to it, down to it. We're nah. myself and some <laughs> friends from school. Uh, nah. we'll this is like the bad finish. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> uh, me. <laughs> And some friends with school will do a show. Uh, we'll pick a topic and just go in on it. Off, it's a total off the rails show, much different than the formats of my other shows. But uh, you can find all of those at Suture Side Talk on various podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcast, and more. All of it. Also, check it out on Twitter and Palace. Instagram. Thank you. But that has been the show. We have been here for nearly four hours, nearly the length of the actual film. I we should have had it going boys. while we were watching it. Like that would have been so funny. This oh, is yeah. awesome. this is our this is like our our big like this is our I think probably our best episode we've ever done. You know the other thing too is this is so long because we were leading up to this. I don't know yeah. why, this, but we were so leading probably up our everything. Most composed one too. Yeah, yeah, everything was leading up to this. Thanks for hanging, guys. Thanks yeah. a lot, Catch guys. You all we later. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for listening. Yeah, Later. See you guys in a month or so. So long. And Hallelujah. Oh, oh my God. It's- oh. Oh.